and co-chairs, you are welcome to, you know, start the meeting and then we can wait a few moments or Is it okay if we just wait a couple of minutes? Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Russ. Hello. Oh, and there's Ms. Pat. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Hi Ms. Pat. Hi. Do you know yeah. if Mr. Bowman and uh, Mr. Cage are joining us? I think Mr. Cage has football practice, possibly. <laughs> um, Makes sense. I know that my son is there now too, so he might, that's possibly where he's been. I think we should start. Yeah, it'll probably be good. I'm, I'm going to need to leave the call at 7.30. Yeah, we should probably get going then. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the script right now. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> no problem. Hi, my name is Alicia and I'm calling this meeting to order as co-chair. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Governor Baker's extension of the March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. <clears throat> Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the September 22nd, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 6.05 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Deborah Ferreira. Present. Russ Vernon Jones. Present. Pat Ananabaku. Present. Brianna Owen. Present. I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we will listen to your comments carefully. We will then hear comments from members who have something to report. Then we will get right into the agenda as follows. A, presentation <clears throat> to council details. B, CSWG report um, part B. C, CREST implementation follow-up. D, IFB six follow-up. E, proposed timeline and meeting schedule. F, resident oversight board follow-up, and then G, hopefully the town manager will be joining us for the last 30 minutes of this meeting for a conversation. 
Um, so our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any members of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moisen to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will be listening carefully. I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay, great. So uh, we can move into members reports. This is the time for members to update us on any work they are doing or events that are coming up. Does anyone have anything they would like to share? Okay, I will get right into the agenda. Um, first, I would just like to update you all that um, you can see in the packet, the email from Lynn, we have gotten confirmation that we will be able to present our recommendations for part B on Monday, October 25th um, at 6.30, a special town council meeting. And she has presented us with two options. One, um, the presenters will be panelists and the remaining committee members will be in the audience. And option two, we can have the entire committee present at the meeting, but we would need to call a meeting of the committee 48 hours in advance. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I think we all need to be uh, panelists and, and call a meeting because we're a group, even though I know that, you know, should it, you know, usually, and I'm thinking this time will be the same, where the co-chairs will present, but I think we, we need to be there, united front, and uh, be all panelists. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, um, Mr. Vernon Jones? I agree. Ms. Pat? I mean, we shouldn't even have this uh, as an agenda. I mean, it's obvious we should all be in the panelists. So we should move on. Okay, great. Um, so we are all in agreement and Brianna and I will reach back out to Lynn and we will just have to make sure that we post that as a meeting. Miss um, Moiston, if you can please take note of that. Um, we can move into the next agenda item which is the CSWG report part B. Um, I'm wondering if Mr. Vernon Jones might be able to pull up the draft for our report. Sorry, I just have a quick question. What time is the um, town council meetings usually? I just forgot, just so I can put it on my calendar. Yep, so it will be at 6.30. Miss Pat? So while um, Mr. Ross is pulling the work together, I just want to commend the subcommittee for working on this. They, um, I have some substantial uh, feedback to give um, for the first couple of paragraphs. Um, just seems to me like the audience is the police chief and the town manager. Um, so I would like, you know, uh, that really reward, or maybe maybe move it down um, towards the end of the um, document. Also, I mean, this is non-starter for me. Um, we have to have, we have to recommend traffic, if we want to call it traffic enforcement or control, that we should not be recommending a task force. It's not going to happen. You know, when we're done now, it is. That's what it is. So I would like us to come into an agreement. We're not, no more further um, review or revision or, you know, uh, a separate task force 
to look into traffic uh, enforcement. In fact, that's my motivation. That's why I joined uh, CSWG. Traffic is one of them. And the folks that I connect with, I, I, you know, I talk to, they're very curious to see what will, what will come out of our recommendation. So my point is, we should make it, we should make it as important as CREST program. So we have to have, um, we have to push for traffic enforcement or traffic control, whatever we call it. We're not going to table it for another group to explore. I will not, I will not sign off on this document if that's what we're going towards. Thank you. Ms. Owen. Uh, Ms. Pat, are you referring to the cyclist safety thing that I had added? Because I that was one. No, of no, the, no, no. Uh, the what? The cyclist um, safety no. thing. No, 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 oh, no. no. Okay. It says um, it, I read the, the recommendation and it stated that um, there will be a task force to further review. Okay. Um, Mr. Ross, if you can like scroll, I will show you. Um, that kind of like disturbed me. I, you know, it's a non-starter for me. I will not agree to that. <clears throat> so in the in the meantime, I guess uh -huh. we're, we're looking for that just to kind of, you know, because obviously I was on the group too with um with Russ and Brianna, and obviously I want to commend Russ for he was the one that started the whole document, and and then uh, Brianna and I, you know, uh -huh. this this and stuff. So for me. Just to kind of say it, I, and 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 I'm glad you you got it, Miss Pat. If that's the way you're interpreting it, for me in terms of the task force, um, the way I I interpreted it, even though I know I was reading it very late at night, <laughs> was to create like a group of people who are unarmed, to kind of um, to to be the ones to if it you know to kind of look at at traffic violations as opposed to the police, you know, um, but. Yeah, maybe if it is if it is reading like a task force, putting together a task force to look at track. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm also not. In agreement. Well, Miss Pat. So I read somewhere where it says in it it needs further review or something like that. Yes. What I'm thinking of in terms of traffic enforcement division that is to to be under the CREST program. I do not want the police officers. Exactly. Period. To be involved mm -hmm. with any type of traffic stuff that is nonviolent. Yeah. So um yeah, because it said over here, so, if you go to page a lot, uh, no, I guess we don't have page numbers. Oops. Yeah, Oops. We, don't, um, we need the page numbers on here. But I guess oh, yeah, yeah, right here. He, he has it. Yeah, right yeah, right there. Yeah. It says traffic recommendation requiring further development. What else are we developing? So I guess what I want to, I want, want to know, what else are we developing? I do not want the police uh, continue with traffic stop. We need to recommend it needs to stop ASAP. So you're saying just in terms of taking that out, traffic recommendations, because, you know, we are, you know, putting their create an unarmed police department or if we want to put it like, you know, a department that goes, well, I think it did say that, that would go under like the crash program and stuff like that. But I think, I think it's, it's basically saying, you know, these are the recommendations. I'm okay with the recommendation, but it says traffic recommendation requiring for yeah. that development. Yeah. So we can ask, because, you know, we can take that out. We just uh, take out requiring for that development. What I'm trying to say is that we really need to amplify the importance of traffic stop. If you're waiting for traffic stop, I will not join CSWG. So it's very, very important, just like CREST program. Mm -hmm. The police should not be involved in stopping residents, period, for any type of reason. They should not be doing that. Unless for dangerous situation or you know somebody is intoxicated or something like that, but they should not be doing it anymore. That's what I would like to see come out of CSWG. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Mr. Vernon Jones. 
Well, I mean, the, the reason I put it together this way is that there is no, as far as we can find out, there is no municipality in the entire United States that has taken all traffic control away from the police. And the one lawyer I consulted said it was not clear whether or not it is legal to give traffic stop authority to non-police. I mean, they're like Oakland, California voted this, but it, they haven't been able to implement it because it's against the law in California. And the person that I consulted as an attorney in Northampton who was part of making a similar recommendation in Northampton, uh, and he said it would take extensive legal research to find out whether it's legal or not in Massachusetts. Uh, I, I'm fine with taking out the task force and making this a recommendation, but we don't really have much of a blueprint of what this would look like. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Pat. And I think um, uh, Brianna also had her hand up too. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think, you know, again, uh, uh, we need to be cutting edge in terms of this. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, obviously, you know, on this group, because of, you know, the work that I do for UMass, it's not like I can do any legal work for you all in that way. Um, but the only thing that I can say is that, you know, this is extremely important. Um, even though there might not be a blueprint out there, um, I think we need to be, you know, kind of do the leadership in regards to it. And, you know, and kind of, stated that these are the things that that we need to have happen and I think a lot of a lot of the times while we haven't seen anything out there in terms of the research that you know all the readings that we've been doing over these last uh, couple of months in regards to it is because municipalities are very afraid of taking that step right um, because they don't want to they want to still um, rely on that crutch of the police which as we know uh, are the ones that are, you know, a lot of times doing that the, the racial profiling, which then stops the, the driver. And then that leads to the further harassment and everything else that happens after that, you know? Um, so for me, you know, I'm, I'm with Ms. Pat in terms of us being very strong and, you know, making a statement in terms of uh, uh, clear recommendations. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat and then Ms. Owen. So a couple of things. Why don't we address the elephant in the room? This is about resource uh, allocation. Obviously, the police chief would like to you know, keep uh, his personnel. I get that. But that's not what this is all about. This is about the lives of BIPOC folks and other people who are marginalized. That's what it's all about. And they said the same thing with CREST program. Last year, when different municipalities are organizing regarding um, alternative community safety, people are saying it's illegal. It's not legal. You can't do it. It's not legal. And now it's spreading across the nation. So people will come up with all kinds of excuses, what is legal and what is not legal. I could care less. We need to you know, come up with very strong recommendation and then let the town council and the town manager work it out that this is a, a living document that will last for a generation. And I don't want to be part of a project that I'm not proud of. I don't care whether it's legal or not, but we need to make a strong recommendation. I mean, we have some city and uh, some communities reaching out to us about the work we're doing, CSWG. Like Ms. Breyer said, you know, we, we have to be on the cutting edge because other people are not doing it doesn't mean that we should not, you know, try something new. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Owen. I'm wondering if the group would feel more comfortable with recommending that we move traffic um, control to a department in Crest once Crest is developed and fully funded. That was that was the recommendation when you and I worked on it. That, started, yeah, that's what we, we said. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Um, Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that that would that would make sense because since we're already um, creating a, a, a you know the Crest program, it would make sense to kind of put it uh, weave it into that program. But I think you know, obviously, in terms of you know when I was looking at this, my thing, and you know, again, Ms. Pat, thank you for for catching. I didn't catch the requiring further development, but um, my thing was that since it was there, right, non police, you know, department to enforce all traffic laws, obviously that's what I'm down with too, you know? So, um, but yeah, it, I think it would make sense to kind of um, put it on the, the Crest umbrella. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, to be clear, we're not suggesting that com Crest community responders deal with no, traffic. No, We're suggesting no. an additional branch be created. Yes, yes. Should, should we just, put this in that this could be done by creating an additional branch within the CRESS program? It, it will be under CRESS program. That the document that um, I worked with um, Brianna, you know, I'm happy to email it to you, that you all, yeah. There was a document on traffic control. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can just, you know, add to that one or this one, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. I will email it to you. If All right. Does this, this do it if we take care of the further development and get rid of the task force? And just say we recommend it. Move prime. Create an unarmed. Well, it says uh, so the A should be that um, the traffic enforcement division, you know, should be under Crest, Pro Crest Department or something like that. So that when people are reading it, they see it immediately. In reading this, the headline here, it doesn't say what department would this program be under. When I read A. Ms. Moisten. Um, with the addition, I would just add that, but not as a, it wouldn't be the crest. I'm assuming that you're thinking of having a whole department underneath crest in addition. Is that what you're saying? Or if no, not, no, no, can no. you clarify because the crest responders doing traffic control? No, 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 no. That's not my, that's what, that's not what I'm thinking. On that crest department, crest is a department, just like you have APD department. They have traffic, they have all kinds of divisions. Mm -hmm. okay. that's On what that I, crest I'm... program, that will be a branch of crest program that is traffic. I like enforcement rather than control, traffic enforcement. Yes, I'm just, yes. I'm just saying that that should be expressed where it says this can somewhere in there a little bit more because the way that it reads, this can be part of the progress program. It doesn't define that necessarily. Does that make sense? Say that again. Say that again. I was just saying to define more that it's its own, it's an umbrella underneath the CREST program. It's another part of, it's a sub department of CRESS. Exactly. Right, that's all. Yes, yeah, sub program. I like to use the word program in, because department is bigger. You know, the, uh, CRESS is department and one of the programs within CRESS is um, traffic enforcement. Thank you, Ms. Pat, Ms. Ferreira. I mean, I would just say, you know, I know we're trying to do this right now, but I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get the language just right, right? Now. Yeah, so I would just yeah. say to kind of like if 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 Ms. Pat and and I know Ms. Pat and Brianna had already the vision, or maybe they had it. Maybe if you all could work on that paragraph, yeah. you know, yeah, we'll do that. Yes, just, yeah, and just send okay. it to because uh, I know Russ is going is is the keeper, but just send it to Russ, and then he can incorporate that as opposed to spending the time. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Owen. Um, that was my thoughts, too, because I think, too, um, one of the things I read in the report from New York was although they have self-service um, 
surveilling streets, one of the things that's being talked about right now is moving traffic control to the Department of Transportation. So maybe we could use that as um, a footnote to mm -hmm. other towns and cities that are moving traffic control to different departments. Yeah. Where, where is that, Brianna? Um, I believe it's in the New York City um, article that I read. I'm looking through um, my email right now. Yeah, I do believe that I had seen some of that. Where yeah. yeah. Other areas what which what what moving traffic out yeah. of the police into um, you know, a, a different agency or department. I've thought about that, but I'm not sure if is if traffic enforcement is big enough to become a department. I think transportation department will be great. The question is, is it big enough to become a department? Maybe the town manager can answer that for us. I don't know. No, but I think, I mean, if I think putting it on the crest, like a, as a program or what have you, I think would be a good way to start, you know? Yeah. And then it can, you know, based on need and, and volume, then it could become a department or whatever in the future, you know? It would be great if, if, the, if the town manager will agree to a transportation department. It would be really good. So, well, if you think that's the best, why don't we recommend it? Okay, let's do that. Oh, Russ, I just I found the article. I'll send it to you now. I think that's clear. So let's do that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, but what, when you all say transportation, you know, you know, you're you're adding like buses. You're going to be adding this and that. Transportation is a very big umbrella. It's not okay. Just so let's do that. Let's do that. That's what you all want. <laughs> I don't know. That's biting a lot. Of, so so I, I'm just saying like how buses travel, how this travel. Transportation is a huge department. It just doesn't deal with 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 traffic. You, you mean so, public works? In, in MS, we have public works. That's, what, I, that's a department that includes transportation. Yeah, that's why no, I'm like- oh, okay, Ms. Moisten said no, okay, okay. So, but Ms. Moisten, can buses you- buses are through- Because I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I, I'm just kind of like, I don't want us to bite off more than we can mm -hmm. do though. So the buses are, are through the transportation service at UMass. So all the PVTA buses that run in Amherst are service of UMass. We don't, we have a transportation advisory commission and, but we don't have a department for it. And the transportation advisory commission falls under the DPW, public works department. Yeah. And what does that include though? Does it include it's more system? about like roads and, and bike lanes and travel and roundabouts, which we all love and so forth. It, so we don't have buses. The town yeah, doesn't have buses. buses. That's fine, but I'm saying it, it includes a lot more, though. So is that so? We're recommending yeah. trucks, like trucks. Who manages the trucks? Well, the trucks are they're just trucks. So DPW manages the trucks for the Department of Public Works. Okay. Okay. So let's call it um, traffic um, enforcement department. It's so tiny though, it's a tiny department. But I would also suggest that parking enforcement would be there too as well. Yes, yes. If you're yes. gonna if you're gonna do that. Yes. Let's call it traffic enforcement department. It's so tiny, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so uh, I I apologize, Ms. Ferreira. I just have a quick question. Ms. Moisten, do we already have people who are responsible for um parking enforcement so are you i are you recommending that they be merged or that we just move the responsibility so parking enforcement falls under the pd currently oh okay thank you miss moiston yeah Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, for me, again, I, I'm, I'm, you know, because I know we're just drafting stuff right now. I, I really want to see something. I, I don't know if I'm comfortable right now just being like, okay, you know, boom, we're going to call it this. And, and I want to see what's going to be under it, what it's going to be. Because remember, we're going to get a lot of, 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 of resistance to this. So we have to be very crystal clear. And we have to be within parameters. Because remember when we, when we um, talked about Crest, right? We were envisioning this this program that was going to be you know ready to go at full full staff full full status and it was a whole lot of you know 
you know, resistance and coming back to us and chipping away, right? So that's why for me, you know, just being like, oh yeah, we're gonna have this huge department and stuff like that. I, I'm, I don't know if that's the wisest way to go with this. I think because traffic is a very volatile, you know, uh, area. Um, and if we're gonna be leaders, we wanna be crystal clear in terms of what we want, as opposed to being like, let's go big and then, you know, and then let let them, you know, go at us with it. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I really wanna see what you all are talking about with this, because right now I'm not clear. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, I agree with Deborah. I think we need some more detail here. And Deborah, in your you know, notes you sent me originally on the draft, there were any number of things you might include, but my question is who's going to find that uh, and write it up? Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I thought, yeah, but I thought we had talked about like Brianna and Ms. Pat, um, kind of looking at that and, and find that paragraph. Could you could you all do that? And Brianna said you might have some stuff already. Yeah, we did a, we did already and we submitted it to the group. And then you guys were supposed to give us feedback. We're happy to refine it and send it back to you all. That's fine. Okay, well, Brianna, you have Deborah's list of suggestions about what should be included there. Can you and Ms. Pat look at that? Absolutely. And I, I, I located the article I was talking about in regards to New York City's town council and um, their mayor looking at moving traffic control to a different department. Great. All right. Maybe that's enough on this. If there... Yeah. For, for now, anyway. Yeah. Ms. Pat, I did not understand your comment about the introduction. So when I was reading it, you know, yeah, we have a great uh, APD. Um, they, you know, they have certification. That's not what I want to read in the beginning. I want us to start with our recommend, you know, some sort of background, but then go into our recommendation. I want the town council to listen like, you know, we want traffic um, enforcement program. We want uh, oversight board, boom, 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 like that. And then at the end, we can just, you know, Say one or two things about APD. For example, the the um, the sanctuary that was included in the uh, in the in the document. I, I think it should be taken out. For example, did we get permission from the person that you know the town at uh, the church had you know harbored? You know just to inject somebody's name like that uh, bothered me. I don't know if, did we get permission from that person to include, to, to include his story? Yeah. Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, I did not ask Lucio about this report in particular, but Lucio and I have talked about the fact that he would like his story to be public uh, and wanted people as widely as possible to know that he, that he appreciated having sanctuary in the church. Um, the reason that paragraph is in the introduction is that what was wrecked when I talked to people about writing reports, what they said, if you're going to look at an agency, you want to start with what's it doing well that you want it to keep doing, and then what are the problems that need to be addressed. So that's, that's part of what, you know, why that's at the beginning. The other is that we've been told that both you know, I mean, Seven Gen said resident oversight board won't work unless you have a cooperative relationship with the police. Uh, and to some extent, I think our crest responders are safer out on the streets if they have a cooperative relationship with the police. Um, and I don't want to soft pedal any of our recommendations, but I think anything we can do to um, open the doors to a more collaborative relationship with the police, as long as we're not compromising our recommendations, we should do for the, because it, it increases the chance that our recommendations will be successful. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think some of it um, can be there because I do agree, you know, it's, it's a good thing to kind of like, 
talk about some of the positives and, and things like that. However, I did send um, Mr. Vernon Jones a lot of edits that weren't included of mine, which, which, you know, I, I definitely didn't like, you know, kind of including like the CSW is not reporting that we found intentional racism in APD. I mean, no, you know, I, I think that is soft peddling. I think that that's basically catering to them. Um, and I don't think it, it should be there. And where we have opportunity to talk more about the her historical racism that's been part of the police generally and stuff like that, we need to include that. So we can be fair, but fair both ways. We can't just, you know, and then there's that part about this may all be the result of unconscious bias or what, no, I don't want any of that in there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, uh, uh, you know, I don't know that, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to give them any any breaks in terms of those things, you know? So that's why for me, I was just like, some things need to be cut out of here. I mean, I, I get what you were trying to do, Mr. Vernon Jones, in terms of kind of like, yeah, you know, but some of that is get is going beyond um, being fair to them because I don't know. I don't know about that. So I can't make that statement. And I don't want to make that statement as a CSWG member because I don't agree with it whatsoever, you know? Uh, in terms and, of them, you, we didn't find intentional racism and, and, and all of those things, no. Why don't you and I work on that part together, Deborah, and we'll see if we can come up with something we can agree with and come back with it. Can I also send it to you guys too? Because I made my own edits, but didn't have enough time to send it to, to the subcommittee. Um, yeah, Deborah basically said what I, I was about to say. There are some language there that really made me very uncomfortable that you know, doesn't reflect, um, you know, what I will agree on, for example, yeah. Yeah, please, please send us that. Okay. And then, sorry. That's okay, go ahead, Ms. Ferreira. Um, and then I know there was some uh, areas, I'm actually trying to go to it, um, where I think we need to discuss further. I know, you know, Mr. Vernon Jones had included it in here. Um, you know, like towards the bottom, like number seven. Um, well, I, I, would, I, I wanted to make some changes in regards to it. And then there was, oh yeah, number eight. There, there was some areas there that it's just kind of like, I don't know if we've discussed it, so. You know, we, we should probably talk. And, and I wanted to kind of change some of the things. Um, like seven, the other, eliminate over surveillance and over policing of BIPOC neighborhoods. We recommend that a resident oversight board be tasked with investigating and addressing the follow, following issues with the APD use of force policy. Um, so I, was, I, I just wanted that kind of put different places. If we're talking about resident board, why are we talking about other there? Why wouldn't we put that in the resident? board section. Um, so some things need to kind of be switched and some things we need to discuss further. Yeah, I, I just didn't have time to do that, but I agree that 7B could be moved to the resident oversight board. Yeah, and then and then 7A, I was saying it could be under the, the healing visioning section if you wanted to include it, you know, eliminate over surveillance and over policing of BIPOC neighborhoods. I think that would be a good place to kind of put that. Yeah, no, I don't agree. I think the community healing is about a community, positive community process altogether. This is about police policy. And I, I mean, I'm, we could make another, we could make it a, if it's the only one here, we could make it another recommendation, well, uh, make it number well, seven. Well, but I think we need to talk about that then, because I mean, what, what do we mean by that? I guess I, I don't even understand what it means. This, this is a high priority recommendation for implementation by APD. We, re we recommend that the APD take the lead on how best to implement this and do so promptly. They don't know how best to implement this. You see what I'm saying? That's why I feel like the healing, that's why I, my thoughts was around the healing. Because remember the healing envisioning is to heal and then for the community, you know, to be the lead to create what the anti-racist kind of you know work needs to happen within the police department. The police department doesn't, they don't know how to do that <laughs> at all. So through the visioning and healing process, that's how you're going to create this anti-racist kind of um, path forward and what that path is gonna look like. 
right? So for me, anyway, when I'm talking about healing, visioning is not just healing, it's healing and how do you move forward to make sure that the police department is anti-racist, it is not white supremacist anymore, is not, you know, in terms of white privilege and is not those types of things. So for me, that's why I was very confused about that um, because they have no, they don't know how to do that. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I completely agree about creating an anti-racist police it is part of the healing and visioning. I think there are policies currently in place in the APD that send police to black neighborhoods more often. And I don't wanna wait for the healing and visioning for that to change. I want that to change immediately. I think there are policy changes they could make right away that would have fewer police cars uh, in, in BIPOC neighborhoods. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira. So I guess for me, Russ, I mean, I agree with you with that, but I, I guess for me, then we'd need to tell them that. We need to tell them what the policy changes because I, I, I'm sorry, I don't trust them to, to make those changes. So if we're, going to make, if we're going to make a recommendation like that, then we need to identify the policies that they're going to need to change right away and, you know, and make that part of our recommendation. Then I, I agree, then I'm, I'm good with that, but we okay. need to identify that. I, I cannot rely on them to come up with, right. with what to do. Why don't we see, next time Kiana, Alicia and I meet with the chief, why don't we see if we can find out a little more about, see if we can identify. I mean, it may be partly related to sector policing. It may be partly related to what they think they're calling community policing, but it needs to change. Um, but yeah, if we, can't, if we can't get to the policy part of it, then I'm totally in agreement with those in the visioning part. But if we can get a policy, if we can identify policy changes, I think we should recommend them. Is that, is that an okay way to go forward? Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, Ms. Pat? You know, when I, you know, and I've read this document a couple of times, I felt similarly like um, Deborah. I feel that the healing thing that Dr. Barbara will be doing for us will kind of touch on the heart that BIPOC community and marginalized folks experience with APD. So when I read this, I was thinking, oh, it should have been under the healing uh, area section. That's the way I, I say it, that the seven A. Okay. Uh, not the police, uh, the APD, they, they won't do it. If we leave it up to them, they will not do it. I don't trust them, it's, it's issue of trust. I don't trust APD, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Pat, Ms. Owen. And they can still report to oversight board. You know, they can still do that, but I think part of the healing in this town, you know, has to do with APD to stop over policing my community. Um, I'm also thinking maybe we can pull from our report with 7 Gen on um, the sector-based policing. And I don't know if the group would wanna have a conversation about that. Um, one, of, one of my concerns with sector-based policing is just that police are, I don't, I don't know, for me, I see, I see an officer at least once a day. Um, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with that necessarily. And I kind of feel like maybe the police should wait until crime to be called because the report that 7 Gen gave us says that they are really initiating the crime or they're initiating things. So if they just responded instead of posted up and waited, like there's fires in Amherst, but the fire trucks are not in my backyard, for instance. And I don't mean to say that in a rude way, um, but just thinking out loud, or even if we could reduce the amount of police presence and people that are at certain areas patrolling. Because I know in my neighborhood, there's a very specific spot that I see that I see police officers almost every day. And I live in an apartment complex. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Ferreira. 
So yeah, so the other the other area is um if you can scroll down, uh, Ms. Ms. Moisten is to go down to like eight, um, eight A, the bottom of eight A. Um, so yeah, so so we we have that top paragraph um, around reduce the the size of the APD. But at the bottom paragraph, we're not looking to have current APD officers lose their jobs. We do believe that a combination of the CREST program ending low level, blah, 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 um, and all of that. I think we need to reword that because, you know, you know, I, I don't know how things are going to happen, but the reduction in size needs to happen, right? Um, so maybe we leave that sentence out. Um, because I don't know, you know, how it's going to transpire, but how, how can we guarantee that APD officers are not going to lose their jobs? You know what I'm saying? Um, my thing is that if, if, if Crest is going to be doing certain work and then the traffic control uh, program, the under Crest is going to be doing certain work, there's going to be eventually not a need for police to be doing certain things. So I don't want to guarantee things that might not come to pass. You know, I think we want to say that, yes, it's going to happen through retirements initially and, and, and not filling vacancies. And we want to be clear with that because we know we just saw what happened, right? When we made our first recommendations and we said reductions in size, that did not happen. I mean, first, Paul Bachman, um, uh put in for an increase to hiring police, and then they've been filling vacancies. Um, which went contrary to our recommendation. So I, I think we need to be very strong in terms of our communication in terms of what needs to happen. Anyway, that's my thought. I mean, folks could differ, but I don't know about saying we're not looking to have current APD officers lose their jobs because I think it, it's, it's kind of being a little bit not sure of what we're recommending and what we're saying. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat. Actually, um, I really don't mind if that sentence is there or not. I don't have any strong feelings around it. I think all, over several months, what we have said is that for the town manager, the town council, for them not to increase um, the number of uh, officers, but they continue to do that. When people retire, do not replace. You know, that's what we've always said. So th this might be good for us to live it, um, but if people feel strongly to, to, to remove that sentence, that's fine too. But I don't care either way. I mean, this one, they, we are not looking to have current APD officers lose their yeah. jobs. Either way is fine. I didn't... Yeah, I hear what you're saying, uh, Ms. Ferreira, and I, Mr. Ross, I support both of them. I can say positive and negative in it. So, obviously, if, if, the, if the town manager is following our recommendation, they shouldn't have increased, you know, hire more police officers. But he did anyway. Um, yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, in response to what Ms. Pat just said, I tried bolding. We recommend the town stop filling vacancies in the APD. Um, but we've had two different opinions expressed about the first sentence in the next paragraph, and, and it would be helpful to hear from other people. Um, oh, oh, I see what you did. Yeah. I like that. Then you can delete the second one. Okay. Yeah, I like the the one that you bold it better. I like that one. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I guess since we're reaffirming of the previous recommendations, um, and we did include that. So I guess something, I mean, obviously it's nitpicky or whatever, like we continue to recommend that the town stop filling vacancies. <laughs> Because <laughs> again, it's just kind of like we've we've said this before, and I know it's it's what we're reaffirming, but it's kind of like you know that this is in this report we're just affirming, we're really making it clear that this needs to needs to stop. 
the filling of vacancies. Yes. Can we say a no new hires? Did we say no new hires too? Yes, we did. Okay. No, but I'm saying in in, in our um, paragraph. Recommendation in our write up. Oh, I... I mean, stop filling vacancies is the same thing as no new hires. No? Okay, it's in there. Yeah, it's just that obviously I'm trying to do it right now. So if it's in there, that's great. Okay. Thank you, Ross. You did a great job. Thank you um, so much. Jennifer has her hand. Has yeah, her hand. I just, I want to say that I don't know that stop filling vacancies and um, don't have new hires are the same things. Mm. Not, yeah. Really? Well, because if they are allocated money to do it, that has nothing to do with vacancies. Those are new. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, that's true. Okay. That's great. Okay. That's, yeah, and I think that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Let's say both. So what did we decide about the first sentence in the next paragraph? I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. What about other folks? What do you all think? You sure, Brianna? No. Um. I see it from both sides, but I think I'm more comfortable with taking it out given that the beginning of the report is more giving, I mean, I feel like the report is balanced and how we're talking about, um, I guess, good things that the police department does, like the tone that we're setting forth. So I'm comfortable with getting rid of that. Yeah, I agree. I also think it's just a little bit misleading um, to read what I do understand that, what point you're trying to make, but I think we could reword it because I think after saying don't, don't fill vacancies, but don't fire anybody, but reduce the police department size is a little bit misleading and confusing. I feel like we could say it in a different way if we wanted to have something of that effect in that paragraph. Okay, okay. well, let, let's take that out then. I mean, maybe we'll come up with something else, but for now, let's take it out. Okay. So it's almost seven. I don't want us to lose Mr. Ross at 7.30. Yes. So um, we have Brianna and Miss Pat who will relook at the paragraph for a recommendation on traffic um, enforcement. And they will send that to Russ, Mr. Vernon Jones. And Deborah and Mr. Vernon Jones are going to relook at the introduction. Are the are there any other yeah the part of it okay are there any other pieces to the report that you all would like to go over talk about um, at this time? I thought the oversight document is well written. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Pat. Okay, um, so if it's all right with everybody, I will move to the next agenda item. Uh, which is Chris implementation follow up. So um, I would like to just report that last week, Miss Owen, Mr. Vernon Jones, Miss Moiston, the police chief, and myself um, got together and we finalized the director of CRUST position and the CRUST project man manager um, position descriptions. We had some revisions in language. Um, can we pull those up, Miss Moiston? See them or are you looking at my desktop? Um, I can see them, thank you. Okay. Um, and so we did, these did go through the municipal rating system and we did also suggest some salary adjustments. Um, I'm not sure uh, what the next steps are, Ms. Moiston, if yep. you have any input, thank you. So there were very few revisions done to, and it's harder to see here because I had to turn it into a PDF in order for it to upload to our system. But there were a few additional changes to the director position um 
but the salary for a level seven is agreed upon, which I can tell you guys what that is. And um, we, if everybody can look at this and get back to me as soon as, like we can post the, the director tomorrow if everybody is okay with it. The mm -hmm. director position can be posted. Has everyone gotten a chance to review these documents, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Pat? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. No, I mean, I, I need, you know, like a little bit of time to kind of review it and mm -hmm. see if I have any um, changes. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Pat. I actually read it. I read it twice, even though we got it very late. Um, for the job description and everything, I don't know what level seven is. It better not be less than 90K. Um, again, if it's less than that one, I have strong words to use because this is something that will benefit BIPOC and marginalized people. And it, I mean, departmental head in this town, I'm making more than 100K. So I don't know what level seven is. With this amount of job description, the, the, the pay, uh, the salary better be very attractive so that the town can attract robust BIPOC candidates who will be interested and can afford to live in this town to apply for the position. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. And Ms. And I'm so how much is level seven again? So actually it's the, it's, I believe it's an, yep. So a level under the level seven, the following position, this is how they rate them by the, the other current positions. It starts at 74,895 and it ends at 10652. So it's negotiable. So they can follow anywhere in between that 11 step wage salary scale. And the positions that follow that are assessor, assistant superintendent to public works operations, building commissioner, the comptroller, the health director, the recreational director, the planning director, and the treasure collector, and the assistant IT director. Thank you. I would yep. like, you know, to see this position well paid in order to attract BIPOC candidates. I can't say that enough. So if you if the town succeed in attracting applicants to apply, the salary pack package better be comparable to white administrators in this town who had departments, public works, APD, and so on and so forth. The salary better be comparable. So I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, especially if, the, if it's gonna be hopefully expanding, right? Um, to, to, to have a lot more uh, people under, the, uh, under this um, program and department, especially if we're recommending kind of traffic to be under there, we need to think about that consideration too. Um, but I, I'm with Miss Pat. I mean, I always, you know, obviously, you know, haven't done the work that I did, uh, you know, as a, a diversity officer and, and director of equal opportunity. That was always a big thing, right? Attracting people, especially diverse people from like east, eastern part of Massachusetts to the western part of Massachusetts, let's say, or, or what have you, which you know, a lot of times has a lot more diversity, can be very difficult if the the salary package is not um, competitive. You know, so that's, you know, that's going to be a big draw out here. And of course, the other part, and, and this might be for you, Ms. Moisten, and then I don't know, Mr. Balkman's going to join us at any point, because that would be a question for him. Like, what's going to be the outreach for this? This is going to, that's going to be critical. The recruitment and outreach to really outreach to a lot of diverse, you know, communities, populations, you know, making calls for recruitment, things like that. It's not, it can't be just a traditional post and, and wait and see type of situation. It needs to go to a lot of different agencies in all different areas where diverse candidates would apply, you know, even out of state too, you know, um, if we're going to have candidates that, you know, diverse candidates that in our pool, right, 
that have the experience that, you know, are, are willing to come out here because we need to get top notch folks and hopefully a healthy, diverse pool. So what is the, what's the outreach recruitment plan? So we will post, we post on our website, we post on Jobs in the Valley. We have a, an account with diversity.com, but that doesn't usually get us a lot of pull, but it might for this actual position. We post um, on Indeed, we post on LinkedIn. Then there's, a, I have an email bank of folks that I email who are BIPOC community members when we have positions that I email out the positions out to and we email out at the school so if there are additional places where you know that we can post then that would be more than great thank you miss moiston miss pat and then miss ferrera if i may um in addition to deborah's um question i also want and i've said it in our previous meetings Another issue that is not well discussed is the fact that when we do refer people to apply, they don't get hired, not because they're not qualified, it's because they see them as real agent of change, people coming into the system to reform the system. And so they don't want to rock the boat. They, don't, they like the status quo. So to say that we're not getting the, uh, uh, diverse candidates or people of color, they are applying, but they're not getting hired because MS is not ready for real change. Let's face it, there are a lot of highly qualified and they want to stay, they want to work in MS, but they're not getting hired. That's the truth. I know my facts. I get information. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones? Has there been any discussion Jennifer, about who's going to be on the hiring committee and whether or not the hiring committee gets to see all the applications? So we route all the applications to the hiring committee. The hiring committee has not been defined as far as I know. Um, that usually comes, you know, we'll post for whatever amount of time. Usually most of our jobs stay open until filled. And so um, somewhere in there, the, there will be a hiring committee created. Do you guys have suggestions who should sit on the hiring committee? Ferreira? So I'm not answering the question about the hiring committee because obviously, I, just quickly, hiring committee just needs to be a diverse group of people. You know what I'm saying? And there's a mm -hmm. lot of folks in the community that could, that, that could, that we could reach out to that could, that could sit on that committee. So that, that's going to be key. But I'm talking more about still uh, the recruitment piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have a listserv of people, but you know, I, I don't know if we have emails of folks that have been engaging with us throughout this whole process. You know, folks from um, defund, you know, 413 defund, defund 413 or what have you. I mean, we need to blast this to all sorts of folks, you know what I'm saying? It can't be the traditional amount of folks. It has to be to BIPOC and all folks that are also, you know, it, it, you know, embedded in this process from the beginning. Uh, we need to kind of outreach to, to all these folks to, to get it. So I think once this um, job description is finalized, obviously, you know, make sure we have a copy, um, you know, like I said, you know, create a very robust email listserv, um, you know, also, Call, calling out to people. If there's people that we really think might have the experience is really giving them a call to say, hey, would you consider applying? You know, obviously, as we know, calling someone doesn't mean they're getting the job. It's just calling them, recruiting them to, to apply for the position, you yeah. know? And, so, I, and I've been thinking about how we could do that on LinkedIn as well, yeah. just because I know that you can put in something as similar as community responders or, or keywords like that and have individuals who work in that field come up and then, you know, kind of look at what is on their LinkedIn page to try to connect with them as well. Exactly, yep. So, um, oh, can I raise my hand? Sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Pat. Another, another effect is um, people who are highly qualified that didn't get the job, We'll tell other people locally, say, good luck, you're going to town of farmers. 
If you are quiet, you get the job, but if you are there to make change, you're not going, don't even bother. So my point is people have already, some people have already given up. You know, they're looking elsewhere. I mean, so I, we're losing, we're losing talent. I, but we I, underst I understand that, but I'm not going to just, I don't think that we should just throw in the towel and assume that nobody's going to take the position, right? Like we have to make a conscious effort to reach out to people above and beyond the people who are just here in the Amherst Pioneer Valley, right? Like, and that is what I was trying to express the other day. Like it's some of, some of the parts that's hard in recruiting here for the town of Amherst is we don't offer things like travel reimbursement. We don't offer things like moving expenses. We don't offer things like, you know, our property taxes are super high. Our rents are super high. So those things, and I get that if someone's coming from Boston, it might be equivalent, but when you live in Boston, you have Boston stuff, right? And, and here we don't have that same stuff. So we we have to go above and beyond and outside of our little pioneer valley i think don't you don't agree with that and i'm not saying that those people won't be told but i i mean at the same time miss pet you're saying that people won't come and apply and but we have because to get of people past to experiences apply. because right. of past experiences people feel discouraged i understand that but that's we're what not I'm saying that's what i'm saying and i'm telling people keep trying okay. try again try again that's and then what i and they're telling me, how many times will I try? I have a reputation. They will not hire me because they don't want any anybody that will rock the boat for. And, for and so, Miss Pat, maybe we should just talk out outside of this That's too, right. because I, um, you know, I I see all the applications and stuff. So I I would like to have this conversation, but now is not the time, and I we shouldn't do that here right now. No. <clears throat> Yeah, you're muted, Alicia. I think oh, she's trying to call on Miss Ferreira. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think, and and I hear you, Miss Pat. I mean, obviously, you know, definitely, you know, there's there's been those, you know, that sharing, right? That there's that that blockade, that wall in terms of if you're going to be, as you said, a change maker, a change agent, then you know, then you won't get hired. So I think a way to kind of combat that is in terms of who's going to be on the hiring committee, you know? Uh, you know, whoever they put in there uh, is gonna have a lot of say in regards to that. And that's where I feel we need to have experienced uh, BIPOC people be the majority of uh, the hiring committee so that they actually have the, the weight and the ability to be able to hire people that are going to go beyond the status quo and actually are going to do um, the work that we need to be done. So I don't know how, are, are, can we kind of be involved or engaged in who gets to be on the hiring committee? That would be my question. But the town manager makes the final decision, hiring committee will, 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 will give recommendation as who they think is strong candidates. But ultimately is a town manager that, you know, you know, makes the hire. So that's, I, the I, that's the problem right there. I know, but like, so for the last, for the Amherst, for the African heritage, he took all of the recommendations in, except, you know, there was a conflict with one, but I mean, he, he, I don't know, Miss. That's, that, that's, that that's different. I think that we're, that's different. I know, but I think that at the same time, like there have been a lot of problems here in the town of Amherst. And I think that there is an attempt to uh, to at least try to see outside of the box of what we've been usually doing. I don't I don't know the best way to say that. And again, I just think that we should talk offline. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Ms. Owen. One of the things, well, I want to thank you, Ms. Pat and Ms. Ferreira for your feedback on um, just hiring and recruitment. I think that your feedback is critical and I'm a little bit worried about the new timeline that the Crest implementation team has put together, given that our community responders will not be hired until December, but the CSWG will be disbanded. Um, I think that everybody's feedback here is critical. And I also think that during these meetings, we, we provide community transparency because we're talking about what's happening at these meetings. And it's something I'm a little bit worried about and I would like to find a solution to so we can continue to engage in these types of conversations, these types of concerns and be more um, transparent with the community as to what is going on. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, thank you, um, Brianna, for bringing that up because um, you know that was one of the things that I think we wanted to talk to Mr. Bachman about, right? So what what's going on with the the standing committee uh, that's going to be put into place, and and whether he's you know already thought about that because he's been knowing that that's what's going to happen. So that's going to be critical in terms of of moving this this work forward. Uh, but in terms of the hiring committee, I hear you, Ms. Pat, in terms of Mr. Bachman being the one to make the, the final decision on that. However, I mean, this has been something that has had a lot of, obviously, um, you know, uh, a, a microscope over it and a focus on it. So if there was a, if, if it, 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 the hiring committee is comprised of, you know, experienced, strong, uh, BIPOC people, and then Ms. Bachman doesn't take the recommendations that they make, I think that that will be a problem. You know, there will be a big problem, you know, in, in regards to it. So I think there would be some safeguard there because everyone is looking at this. This is going to be a critical, critical position. If we don't have someone that is experienced and strong in this position, that could be it for Crest right there, you know? So this is gonna be under a microscope. I know I'm gonna be following this very closely. Thank you, Ms. Pereira. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I think it's real important when this position is posted that we not just post the job description, but that we spend the extra money or whatever it takes to advertise this as a unique, special, cutting edge opportunity to do something new. Um, because we we are proposing something that's that's different, and I think I think we can can sell it that way if we'll we'll do whatever it takes to sell it. The other thing is I don't think it's enough to talk about a diverse hiring committee. I think I like what Ms. Pat was saying about we need we need people who are willing to to be change agents who are willing to upset things, and we need some of those folks on the hiring committee as well. Thank you, Mr. Brendan Jones, Ms. Owen. Um, Ms. Moisten, I was just wondering by chance if there were any updates on the director of DEI. I wasn't sure where that stood. Yep, that just had some other changes too made to it. Um, and they're, we're working on it, I believe on Monday we are working on it again. So the town manager and the HR director, myself and the um, another HR manager all sat together and went through to make sure that it measured all of the HR needs and it fit within the town of what it scope. I don't know how to ex exactly explain it, but it was reviewed and there were very minimal changes made to it, but that will be sent to you guys before we send it out as well. Do we know what the salary scale is for that position? I believe it's either a seven or an eight. What and is then, eight? What is the range for eight? Uh, 82395 to 110718. Um, and so we are hoping to be able to have it finalized by Friday so that we can get it posted as soon as possible. Which Friday? This week? No, not tomorrow, Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Okay. That way you guys get to, to see it. I actually like this. Um job description and I can't speak for my fellow members that I read it I think it's good it's strong thank you Miss Pat Miss Ferreira yeah I yeah I mean I guess like if we can have until tomorrow at least though um you know I was oh for end this of day, end of the day tomorrow yeah to, to review this yeah, I mean, we can post it for Monday or Tuesday. We do have to, as Mr. Vernon Jones said, we do have to create a lead in for it. There's no lead in it. And we don't we, we don't just post the job description itself. So and and we need um, a good lead in, not just the typical, hey, the town of Amherst is looking for a qualified individual. Yeah. We need something stronger than that. And so I think we just, you know, we have to create that lead in. Um, if you guys have any ideas, we're welcome most of these most of this stuff here is is your i mean all of it really is your vision we just changed the words to be more hre-ish if that makes sense i don't know um and so yeah any suggestions for the lead in please oh and one one other thing that i wanted to say is that um you know everything that i've said also holds true for the director of um 
first the equity inclusion, you know, in terms of the outreach, the hiring committee, you know, all of that, you know, a recruitment plan, all of it has to be, you know, just as strong as the one for Cress. And I absolutely agree. And I think that that's the, they have the same equal level of import of urgency and importance and detail. Thank you. So um, I think we have said that we will give group members an additional day to look over the job descriptions, make sure that they're in agreement and they don't have any other edits or revisions. Um, so if you do have any suggestions, please just send them to Ms. Moyston. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Moyston. Sorry. So I, I just want to talk about the program assistant position quickly too. That's up now. So when I, I'm going to, so what I will also do is send you guys the two wage scales that everything falls on so that you guys can have access to everything that you would possibly need to make the decision. Um, so the community, the program assistant, and I just want to be clear, because I know that the two co-chairs and Russ are aware of this, the union does not have an, a position that is called a program manager as we were trying to name this. So the working title of this position will be program manager, but the union title will be program assistant. And in the program assistant at a level G, which is where, which is where program assistant falls, it starts at 48993 and it ends at 65842. And I, the, two co-chairs, Russ and I sat and did some revisions and put down a proposal of the level H. And what they say about the level H is the items in there, the electrical inspector, the building inspector, the assistant sanitarian, the wetlands administrator all have particularly skilled licenses that are connected with those positions. And that's why they're a level H. I just wanted to let folks know that. Um, but besides that, there weren't many changes from the last time that Russ, Alicia, and Brianna and I met. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. I just have a quick clarifying question. So is, does that mean that we it's not going to be bumped up to an H because of that reason? Okay, thank you. Can I, can I say something about that? I think um, we're being creative in this town. We should try to step away from the traditional certification because lived experiences so all, should all also count. If we're really trying to um, be more inclusive, I think we should not ignore the so-called you know, soft skills as well. I disagree with that. The fact that you know, you know, plumbing certification and electrical certification, because of that, similar position will be uh, lower. I don't agree with that. Because, you know, people bring different, you know, uh, skill set to the job. And um, if the union job type uh, position pays certain amount to certain position, it should apply to this one as well. That's the way I say it. And again, it, 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 to me, it goes back to racial thing, because I would like a, a person of color, BIPOC, to get this position. And now we're talking about certification in electrical and I don't buy that, no. Well, so I, I understand where you're coming from with that because I thought we were, we were all in hopes for an H, but that, that's a union thing. So the program assistant, when you look at the SEIU wage scale falls under a level G. And so that's where it is. The level H's are all the inspectors and they are that because they have the licensees. I can bring it back to the group and see if they, I mean, basically it comes down to what the union says. I, we don't really have much, we have to negotiate with the union either way. That's not up to us, right? As a, in a full terms like that, we have to negotiate that with the union. And I can tell them to push it further to an H and see what happens. But that is the, that is what, you know, H comes with licenses. And I don't know that how the, union would respond to that otherwise. I can't speak on that. The only other thing I could think of was to make it a non-union position.
Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, that's an interesting idea, Jennifer. What what if we were to say, you know, make it an H or make it non-union? Right. From my understanding, well, you're right. So I can bring that back to them. Because in within the uh, description, it's a lot for this person to do. It's a lot, you know, for the uh, uh, amount of money that being proposed. So non-union would be I know, a good alternative. So if they were non-union, if I look at what's equivalent on the non-union, then that puts it. My guess would be a level two, which starts at 49 and ends at 66, or possibly the level three, which starts at 53 and ends at 72. But again, I will send the wage scales to you guys along with the job description so you can have a so you can see for yourselves and and yeah. understand it yeah i think whatever gets the highest salary would be fine with us me too um i'm in agreement miss moisted i think that we're asking for an incredible amount of work this is has a lot of responsibility it's a new department there's going to be a lot of learning and hands-on development i think with this role and i also my my other concern is just we have community responders who will fall under this and i'm also worried about their compensation being less than this and so i think we should really try to encourage this to get a bump yeah, I did say that because we had that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so I will I will say it again. Thank you, Ms. Meissen. Mr. Vernon yep. Jones. Well, the other thing that may be relevant here is I think we might want to revise this supervision exercise. Uh, I might take out generally none, put in will provide guidance and instruction. Uh, I think the you know, particularly as the CREST program grows, that we want somebody to whom the director can delegate some supervisory responsibilities. So I would take out generally non put in will and uh, say maybe, maybe uh, supervisory responsibilities may be delegated by the director. Well, that might help because the union positions don't have supervisory yeah. Um, they don't. They don't have supervisory. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. What to call it? I mean, but again, like, but again only if, today. only if non-union gets us more money. <laughs> well, non-union does typically always get you more money. Okay. So. That would be my suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So uh, just to be clear, am, are we asking that the DE, not the DEI director, I'm sorry, the director of CRESS come in at a level eight? As yes, opposed, yes. And that we, and the program assistant comes off of SEIU and goes to, uh, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking? Level three. Level three, which is 53. No. Uh, five like, to 72. Yeah. The minimum I would like this, uh, the assistant B is 65, will be the minimum or 60. So that puts them at like a. Um, I mean, so again, I'm going to send you the chart because 65 falls in all of these. So it's just, you have to, you can't just say you want them to make a minimum of 65 because we can get them 65 at a level three, but then they're going to cap out in three years when they have their three increases at a step 11, right? And so you have to, that's why I want to send this to you because you have to look at it and really understand that if somebody comes in higher than anywhere in a five, like you don't get longevity here until you've been here for 10 years. So if you come in at a level eight, nine, 10 or 11, 
we get annual increases at our anniversary date and we get increases at COLA at the end of the, at the beginning of the fiscal year, which always moves you up the scale. So then you end up maxing out. And then instead of getting, you only get 2% because you're only getting the COLA and you haven't been there long enough to get longevity. So I'll send the scales so that you guys can review them and just keep that in mind because it makes a big difference. Thank you, Ms. Moiston, that is helpful. And so can we also send our suggestions in regards to um, the scale to you, Ms. Moiston? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Ms. Ferrer, are you okay? You're awfully quiet. <laughs> I don't mean to call you out. Just what are your thoughts? Okay. It, it, okay. No, I'm in total agreement with it. I mean, I okay. guess my only my only confusion that mm -hmm. I had was towards the end with what you said that obviously like you cap out. Um, so so that obviously makes it more difficult though to bring in the, the kind of caliber of experience that we'd want. I thought it would only be kind of like that that salary range, right? That, and I understand that a lot of times when you're hiring someone, you're trying to bring them in, in um, for, for the company, right? A lower salary range, but they can keep on growing, you know, beyond a certain cap mm -hmm. after that. So I'm, I'm, I was hoping if we brought them in higher, we could still, they could still keep on getting those annual raisins beyond the cap, you know? So right. And, and so I, I think I was only referring to Miss Pat saying we at minimum come in at, at 65. And I was just saying, you can't really do it that way because 65, I'm, I'm trying to show you the thing and you can't see it. 65 falls in a lot of places here, mm -hmm. right? 65 falls in a, in a level two, but it's, it's a step 11 at 66, right? And we don't want to do that. So the closest one to 65, we've got 61 at a level five, and then at a level six, we have 68076. So 65 comes in at a step three of a level five, but you, you know, I, I think what you're, you're going for is you either, they need to come in at a five or a six because they're already in that 60, range and then they have all that time to keep earning. so let's do that yeah, yeah. so let's do that mm -hmm. so i'll say five or six yeah let's yeah. do that okay thank you miss moiston mr vernon jones yeah i'm sorry to have to go uh oh, if no. you get to talk to the town manager tonight um i support whatever it takes to get the our successor committee up and running quickly and I think a case can be made either way, whether it's a town manager committee or a town council committee. Town manager, it can be created quickly and uh, probably hopefully close to what we want, uh, but it's vulnerable to the town manager dissolving it. A uh, town council committee, they will mess with the wording. I mean, they, 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 they tend to spend a lot of attention sort of, uh, putting their own stamp on exactly the charge that a committee has on all. I don't, I don't know that that is necessarily a problem, but we should expect that. Um, but as long as we, it moves forward, uh, I, I, I don't have a strong feeling about which, which way it goes. And I'm sorry not to be able to stay. Um, and thanks for all the feedback on the report tonight. I think we're, we get closer and closer. Thank you, Ross. Thank, Thank you so much. Mr. Vernon Jones. So I'm looking at the time and I just want to apologize to everyone that my camera is off. My eyes are so dry and my glasses broke. So I'm just uncomfortably close to my screen and look ridiculous. But I want to move us quickly through these two agenda items before Mr. Bockelman joins us. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the IFB follow-up. Um, I wanted to come to the group to let you all know that we are working with LEAP to help us review policies and procedures at the Amherst Police Department. Um, I'm really excited to work with LEAP. I feel like they are really, they're being flexible and they're eager to help us. As you can see in the contract that's in this evening's packet, um, 
it is a smaller scope of work that they're going to be able to do. Um, three things for certain that they're going to be able to investigate and provide information on are the use of force, consent searches, and pretextual stops, which I believe will support our report on traffic control and what we have on consent searches now. They have also um, been flexible with us to include language around if time permits to look at other things such as the APD data collection process, providing information on how to make public safety data transparent, um, review of other policies like police overtime, response protocol, um, firearm policies and staffing, and also um, UMass mutual aid agreements, which I think will be really helpful. Um, I did get a chance to meet with Amos from LEAP a little bit before this meeting to talk about um, sort of the background to what we we're hoping to get from each of these for the scope of work. So I thought that was really helpful. In regards to our other consultants, um, Seventh Gen is unable to work with us because our timeline is very, very tight. And the ADMHA is wondering in regards to our timeline, if we could give them an extra week. What I am thinking moves us sort of into our next agenda item, which is the proposed timeline meeting schedule. Um, Ms. Moisten, can I share my screen? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, why, I just have to be excused for a moment, so don't call on me because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> okay, so this is the proposed meeting schedule that Alicia and I put together. Um, one, one of the things that I wanted feedback on was how the group felt about meeting for an extra long meeting on October 7th. What I am thinking is, is we give our October 7th meeting to LEAP and the ADMHA to present to us to give them um, an hour each and then 30 minutes of questions that we might have. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that? And I'm sorry if I'm talking so fast. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware that the ADMHA was interested in this work until an hour and a half before our meeting. Ms. Ferreira? So I guess what is the ADMHA going to do? Because I wasn't able to review all of these things since, you know, we got a little bit later and stuff. So I guess what a, I know what LEAP is going to focus on, what are they going to focus on? If I could just get a, a quick kind of summary of like quick, like brief summary of yeah. that. And then also, I guess if you can kind of go over what the schedule would be for the rest of the time so that again, I can have, and maybe if we can get that sent out to us so that we have it, um, so we can kind of figure out, you know, okay, what, how much work are we gonna get done within this time period? But anyway, so yeah, those are my questions. Absolutely, so the ADMHA is going to work with us to help us look into how the Amherst Police Department could be anti-racist in terms of training, accountability, and supervision. Um, okay. And Good. then in regards to the timeline, um, this is the meeting schedule that I put together with Alicia. We're intending that we meet four more times. Um, the October 7th meeting, the reason why it's a little bit longer than others is because we would intend to have ADMHA present and LEAP and also report on the um, CRESS, like have CRESS, the CRESS implementation team update and successor group and resident oversight board update. Um, and then the meeting after that would be to discuss the consultants recommendations that we'd like to add to our report and also maybe coming up with some alternatives after we get their information. And then we would present to the town council and then um, Alicia and I designated the last CSWG meeting Thursday the 28th just for reflection. Ms. Pat. Thank you to our incredible co-chair so much. I'm, I'm okay with the, uh, with the revised schedule, but I can't speak for everyone. I'm fine, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, another thing in regards to the ADMHA, we are in conversation with them right now, but they are not a thousand percent working with us given that the timeline is so tight. They have requested an extra week in the original IFB, there was wording around two two-hour presentations, and we'd like to shut it down to just one one-hour presentation to us, and then we'd like them to join us for the town council presentation to support our recommendations and answer questions. Um, once I have more information on whether they're working with us, I can let the group know. Ms. Ferreira? Would LEAP also join us um, for the uh, town council meeting? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, because it'd be good for, for, for both of them to, to be there if they're going to work with us. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, as, as of right now, it, it, it seems, yeah, it seems doable. Um, you know, my only concern, and I guess when we talk to Mr. Balkerman is in terms of the, the follow-up committee, right? Because we're gonna be basically making our recommendations and then pretty much we'll be leaving, um, you know, soon after that, you know? Um, so I think that would be that. And then I think too, and I think we probably want to give more thought to it. Um, I wanted to tell Ms. Pat, I, I, I like the idea of us kind of at least putting together something in terms of our experience with the CSWG. I do think that that would be important to document um, because we were and, and will always be a very unique group. Um, and we can't let that kind of you know fall to the wayside because we know that once we're done, then all of the different myths will begin and, and, and changes to what we did and so on and so forth. So I think it would be important for us to have our own viewpoint. So I definitely would be um, willing to, to be part of creating something like that. Thank you for supporting that. <laughs> if we don't do it, somebody else will write it. I mean, somebody else will do it. So a lot, um, during part A of our charge, I started working on sort of a document talking about our experiences and the pushbacks that we've experienced. Maybe I can share that with the group and we can um, add to that and talk about some of the experiences that we've had for part two of our charge and make it sort of a timeline of our experiences when we're reporting and include both of our reports. I really do like the idea that Miss Pat brought to the group on a book. Yeah. 100 years to come, our ancestors, our grandchildren and great grandchildren, they will be like, oh, my mom, my dad did this for this town. History. We're making history in this town. We, we're risking everything to, uh, to be on this uh, group. It's not an easy group to be in. To, to be very honest and be vocal and speak your mind and speak your truth. It's not easy. Um, on a l little bit of a lighter note, and I can't even believe this, I'm quoting Irv Rhodes when he said a lot of times when history is being made that people don't know that they're making history. And so I have to say, you guys might feel like frustrated because everything didn't move the way that you wanted to or all the recommendations didn't weren't implemented in the way that you wanted them to be. But I have to say, again, we've not had any committee for the last nine years that I've been here that has done so much in such a little amount of time. So. Thank you. And you're doing a great job too. It's not easy to be in your position. No, it's no, not no, no, easy. no, 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 it's not easy no, no. at all. So yeah. we appreciate you very, very much. So when is Mr. Buckman joining, joining us? Yeah, you definitely do it with a lot of grace, uh, Jennifer. Yeah, she does it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, I can oh. hear him, I think, because he, he's in another meeting. Oh, so okay. I think he's trying to, you know, Finish transition okay. from one to the other. Okay. We, we do have one, just one last agenda yeah. item, um, the resident oversight board follow-up. So I wanted to let you all know that Mr. Vernon Jones, Alicia and myself have a meeting next Monday um, at three o'clock with the town manager and the chief to engage in more dialogue and speak about next steps. And we'll um, update the group at the next meeting. Thank you. And then I don't, do you guys- I have a question. Of, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Martin. I just didn't know if you guys had any needed any clarification on the differences between the town manager's appointed committee and the town council appointed oh, committee? Like there's no documentation for that really. I, it would just be whatever I, I wrote up based off of what Paul and perhaps Lynn has said. And I haven't spoken with um, the council president about this yet either. So, um, but the, the from what I've, been told by Paul and the way that I see it is, you know, both of those, the council and the town manager have a great amount of, I, I'll just say it, power, right, for lack of better words. So one is more towards legislation and the other one is more towards executive. And that's really the only difference. And so my thought process would be whoever is going to get it moving the fastest would be the way to go because I don't necessarily town know that there's, that there's a lot of a difference, right? Um, but again, I will definitely check in with Lynn tomorrow or the town council president and see 
um, what her thoughts are about that. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, I definitely see what you're saying, Ms. Pat, in terms of, of, of the town manager and possibly putting whatever's quicker. But the only thing is, though, is that we do want it to be longstanding in terms of at least until all these recommendations, like that they're monitoring the recommendations, that they're following a lot of what you know, our wishes were for, for the reports, part A and part B. So the other thing though with Mr. Paul Bachelman, unfortunately, is that um, it seems like he, you know, which is what he's doing with us, right? When we asked him to stay on longer and he was like, no. So he might, he just will dissolve it. You know what I'm saying? With all the recommendations being put into place and stuff. So, I, I, you know, the town council might be the longer way to go, but it might be the more the, the place that it stays longer. If, if that's the case, I guess I would want it to be whatever they would have a little bit more security to stay in place until the work is done in terms of, of overseeing and monitoring the recommendations. It is harder, I think, for a the council to dissolve a committee than it is for the town manager, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat? I think um, it would depend on the outcome of this upcoming election. It depends on what we have, because if we have what we currently have, then the oversight board might be diluted so much by the town council. But if we're talking about new town council next year, then perhaps it makes sense to have them create that. But with this one, I don't have you know, much trust. The second thing is that um, someone has suggested that we should actually push for, is it warrant, like something, um, that the either the town council or the voters um, should look into so that to make um, the oversight board have more 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 security like cushion that it won't yep. get dissolved. It wasn't a bylaw, it was like the step above a bylaw. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I just so um yeah, so I, I didn't see that in the recommendation, but it's something that we need to include as well. Mm -hmm. I just brought um, the president of the council in, and so perhaps oh, she's okay. here and she can answer some of those things herself. Okay. Let me try to answer it. First of all, I always enjoy listening to your meetings. It's educational uh, and you work so hard. Um, the um, town managers, um, under the town manager item, report item on the agenda for Monday is in fact the what are follow on committee, we're calling it something else, the whatever committee to CSWG. And that is an up. And the reason I, we put it there is because of the issues that several of you have raised. And that is that you would like to see this get moving before um, CSWG concludes their work. And so the town manager and I agreed to put it on the agenda uh, for this week for a discussion with the council. I'm afraid it's going to be very late at night because I also know he's in another meeting where they're still on agenda item one. So it just it's not <laughs> these things don't happen as fast as we would like them to. Um, so um, in the, and part of that discussion will, in fact, be should this be a town council committee or should it be a town manager committee? Either way, there are committees in Amherst that basically become ongoing permanent committees. And um, this, I don't think you're going to see this committee have this kind of short time frame that you've had, or you know, the absolute deliverables. I think you're going to see something that's broader, although I have not seen your draft charge, but I have personally, and I, I cannot speak for the council, but I have personally seen the follow-on committee, the subsequent committee, as being something that's around for a long time, that really is overseeing, if you will, public safety kinds of issues. So that discussion will happen on Monday. It's not going to wait until we see you at the end of October. Okay? Thank you. Absolutely. Wait, is a follow-up? Oh. Follow sure. up with that. So, okay. So the discussion happens. The, the name of it is a Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Thank you. Um, 
So, so that discussion happens on Monday. When will the decision be made, I guess, in regards to it? Will it be that Monday too, or will it be another time? Based on the discussion of the council, it could be made on Monday. I mean, people could just say, listen, we think this should be a town manager committee. Go forth and make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, well, what, if it's, what if it's decided about the town council? Can you all? Well, <laughs> you know, somebody was talking about how people get into wordsmithing and uh, mm -hmm. I've seen it happen. Um, so I'd like to tell you it'd be fast. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to be caught in a lie. So yeah. <laughs> um, I think we would do the best we could. I, you know, we, we, we've created things that look initially like town council meet committees, uh, the, uh, the um, ECAC and Environmental Climate Action Committee was one of those, but in fact, it's town council, it's town it's town manager appointees, mm -hmm. and in fact, we recently revised that um, charge so that as of January third, when the new council is seated, um, th there will not even be councilors on it; it will only be residents. It up. Up until now, it's had two counselors on it. Uh, so, um, but it, it, the town manager uh, does make those appointments. He does bring appointments to the um, TSO committee, which is the, come on, I'm full of my acronyms tonight, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, town services and outreach committee, and they approve them. I have seen in the space of the last, two plus years, I've only seen maybe three appointments ever even challenged. And even then they've gone through. So I guess my question would just be that if it does uh, get created through the town manager, you know, I guess the bottom line is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't get dissolved by the town manager. So when you talk about this standing committee being long-term, even if it's created by the town manager, would that be the case then? Would it be written as such, right? Or because this is what happened with us, right? This was, a, a, a as the town manager said, it was a, supposed to be a shortened period and th therefore he dissolved, yeah. he's dissolving us. So well, if it's something, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm no, I'm sorry. I was very rude. Go ahead, Deb. No, no, it was just to, to, to say that, you know, if it is created by the town manager and like you said, if it's created as a longstanding committee, mm -hmm. will he then have the, the, the power to, you know, dissolve it, even if it's stated as a, as a longstanding committee, you know? I mean, obviously I can see him dissolving it, let's say obviously for a cause, right? Like everyone goes crazy and is doing a, you know, a job where they're getting drunk in meetings. Obviously that would be a reason to dissolve it. But barring something crazy like that, right? People are just doing their work and they're being strong and they're actually making sure that these, you know, the, the issues, the social justice issues are being followed through. That should not be a, a reason for that, you know, for dissolving and the solution. So, so that um, just a little bit of history. Um, when the town council was seated, we were given a very thick document that was put together by the select board chair, Doug Slaughter. And uh, it was a document describing all of the committees. And we had this discussion, gee, you know, maybe we should consolidate some of these and so forth. That was three years ago and nothing has happened. No committee has been dissolved. No committee has ended. What happened with CSWG is you had kind of a, a task to get done. And, and we really wanted you to get it done as fast as possible. And my gosh, you have been amazing. So in that process of getting it done, now the question is, well, what should we do to make this carry on? And fortunately, you have come forward with the draft. Again, I have not seen it, but my understanding is the draft of a charge for a follow-on committee, a successor committee. And that successor committee may not have a termination end. We don't have one on the Climate Action Committee. Mm -hmm. um, th there's a, a, very few committees that I know of. Uh, mostly task forces do, or occasionally the president actually has the ability to uh, appoint a task force. And I did when we did the percent for art committee. And as soon as their um, task was done, we dissolved it. But a lot of committees in the town of Amherst are 
in perpetuity until somebody says, maybe we should look at them all and see what we should do with them. But nobody's done it yet. Does that answer your question, Deb? Yes, thanks. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Is it in your charge that you've drafted, do you have an ending date? No. Nope. No. Good. Keep it that way. <laughs> Lynn, I, I do have a question for you. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. Absolutely. If our success... If our successor group, um, well, first off, I just want to say I, I see one of the biggest um, roadblocks or obstacles that this group has faced to implementing our recommendations budget. If this group becomes a town council committee, will the successor group um, be more be able to be more hands on with the budget of our recommendations and carrying this out? You know, we're all in the same boat when it comes to that. Um, you know, every these, for instance, you know, ECAC. They have published this huge document. If we implemented everything that document asks us to implement, it would be the entire budget of the town because they would want every vehicle to be electric. They would want every roof to have solar on it, et cetera. They'd want us to have home incentive programs, et cetera. You know, we, we just can't afford it. So one of the biggest challenges that the town manager and his staff face every year is to give is to bring to the council for a review of balanced budget. And so uh, you'll certainly have the same level of ability to make recommendations, but you're, I, I hate to say it, you're in these pot of, with all of us. Jen, are you, are you wanting me to say, you wanna say something to me? I, well, not, well, not, <laughs> limited to you, um, to the group. I just want to kind of follow up on Deb and Brianna. So I think one of the things that needs to happen, and I, Lynn, this, they're putting this forward as a standing committee so that there is no end date. So that um, I do suggest that, you know, again, the Human Rights Commission has, there's a bylaw for that. Mm -hmm. And so it, unless you change the bylaw that was ruled by town count man, the, right. sorry, town meeting, it's not going anywhere. So mm -hmm. those kind of things make things a little more secure but also um in regards to brianna and the finances i think you know one of the bigger problems i think that happened with the cswg is that you guys just didn't have the full resources of how the budget process works and so when we had the meeting the first meeting with the african heritage reparations Assem reparation assembly one of the things that we did was we had Sean Mangano come and walk through the budget and walk through what the stabilization funds were for them currently. And so I think that giving this new standing committee mm -hmm. full resources of how the budget process works will be a, a much better, right? Like it'll put them in a better position than, and I'm sorry that this happened with you guys that you didn't have those full resources and understanding of the budget. It just kind of came up and it was like, whoo, we're going through the budget, right? as opposed to really fully understanding how a municipal budget works, because it, it works much different than a private sector budget, much different than like um, a, a university or a school budget. It municipality for whatever reason is its own beast. And so I just think um, having those full resources will be something that we look to do for the standing committee. Jen, Jen I think that's absolutely right on. And first of all, a standing committee is an ongoing committee that it, it stays until somebody decides somewhere and it has to be, you know, through some process that it's not going to happen. So I, a standing committee is exactly what you want. I'm just going to share my own experience. Go for the standing committee first. Do not try to make it through a bylaw initially because the bylaw just takes so much longer. So just go for the standing committee, then try to do the bylaw. Let me just add to what Jen's saying about the budget. Literally, the town begins in October and November to start forming the budget for next year. So that I believe it's on the 15th of November, there will be a meeting of the school committee, the library, and the town council. And Sean Mangano and the town manager will make a presentation that gives us a projection of what they think the budget will look like the coming year. And on that same night, I think that's what we're doing this year. Our, our calendar is a mess. Um, we will also have a public forum where we're literally asking people 
individuals, committees, whatever, come and tell us what you want to see. Then we actually move to put together what's called financial guidelines, and it's developed by the finance committee. Um, Lynn, I don't want to interrupt you, but Ms. Yep. Moyston, do you know if Mr. Balkelman will be joining us tonight? I just want to be mindful of everybody's time, and I know yep. we had scheduled Thank the meeting too. to eight. Um, yes, and uh, he just texted me and said that they're winding down and then uh, right. some other conversation happened, so I know that he's he's trying to... Right. And, to to come and Brianna, I, let me just say, we're starting the budget process and very, very soon for the entire that goes into the next year. And even then, the wow, yeah, this is fancy. And even then, when the new council is seated in January, on January 3rd, they will review anything that the previous council has already done. And if they want to make changes, they make changes. Um, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, just to say thank you, uh, Lynn, again, for, um, you know, describing that process. And, and I'm in total agreement with um, Jennifer. I think that that was something that obviously, you know, was, was, you know, too bad. And hopefully it wasn't purposeful, right, that we didn't get that, that budget overview um, in the beginning, because that did end up being a big part of the problem, right, especially towards the end, in terms of like, wait a minute, but but this wasn't told to us in the beginning. And so now here we are making these recommendations and now we're hampered by the the the, the reality of, of the you know, municipality and, and its budget, you know? So I think that that's gonna be critical for the standing committee to, to have that understanding right there and to also have the understanding of, okay, what's the, where, where are the parameters that we can push against too, you know? Because obviously, you know, a, a committee like ours is always gonna, be pushing against, okay, what's the status quo? So what's the parameters we can push against? However, what is also how, how things work, you know? So um, yeah, that would have been incredibly uh, important for us to have gone early on. One other comment, and that is a lot of the budget process is regulated by state law. And so while we'd like to think we have complete control, we don't. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I, you know, I want to say that I've learned. I have learned so much from working with CSWG, um, and it's put me in a position in different places here in the town where I'm. I'm. I'm getting more intel. I'm more involved in certain things that, and it makes more sense. But one of the things that I did really, really notice is that, you know, I think moving forward for any new committee, regardless of what it is, that you know, a new committee needs to have the town clerk come and go over the basic, you know. Uh, open meeting laws and that the fi the finance director needs to come and do a presentation on the budget and so that's something unfortunately that we learned and Mr. Balkelman said just he said just said one minute and so I think he's coming he had to step away for a second and then he's coming in so and, I just and, wanted and you guys then to you know should that. exit me <laughs> oh okay thank, thank you Miss Lynn so much absolutely thank you so much this is very thank helpful you. I, le I learned something tonight. That's awesome. Me too. <laughs> so I guess uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Bachman, um, how long are we going to dedicate to this? Because I do, I know we, we had scheduled it until eight. Um, you know, we were supposed to meet with them for 30 minutes. Um, so, well, I guess for me, I'm saying 15 minutes is as much as I can give to this at this point. Then I need to, I need to take care of my family. Did we lose Alicia? Yeah, she told me that her, she just texted me that her computer froze. She's logging back on now. Oh, okay. She's also has um, something time sensitive. So I'm hoping that we can keep the conversation 15, 20 minutes max. Okay. So can yeah. we, can we, can we negotiate 820 max? Everybody leave. Okay. Yeah. I can hit leave really quick. Bam, <laughs> we're gone. You're well, still working. You're still at work. I, I am. And um, yesterday my son's car broke down on Montague oh, Road. No and none of the lights or anything worked in it. So I don't know, Route 63 is, I almost walked down to the Cumberland Farms area, Brianna. Um, but oh, it's very dark. And so there were there were no lights or anything on down there. And we called AAA at 9.30 and they didn't show up till 
Oh, wow. Um, and so we hadn't eaten or anything. And then my other son calls at some point and it's like the dog ate the pizza, which was like even more oh, devastating God. for us because <laughs> that was like dinner. And so I am exhausted. Yeah, to you, say. Should, you so. should be. Wow. Hope you get good sleep tonight. Mm-hmm. So, Brianna, <laughs> what else do we have? <clears throat> um, so that was the last agenda item was just a okay. conversation with... Um, Mr. Bockelman. I'm well, trying to figure I, out if he locked himself out. Hold I guess that we're, we're, so then the next meeting, just so I'm clear, the next meeting date, then if we can just kind of go over that. So, because I know we just did the, um, oh, yes. So will it be the 7th? So will yes. the it would be Thursday, October 7th, and we would be meeting from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, so 6 to 9, so I can update. And, and moving forward, are we always going to be meeting now at 6? Just to. I have that on the schedule, but if group members have an issue with that time, i um, happy to, to move it. No, that's good. That's good. With it's you. perfect. I love the six o'clock. It's perfect. I, I get my homework done in between. <laughs> I was really happy when uh, Jennifer was like, when you send that and you were like six o'clock, I was like, yay. Oh, he's here. Uh. Hi, Mr. Bockelman. Thank you for joining us tonight. I apologize for being late. I'm the sole staff person for the TSO committee. So thank you for being patient. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, we have about 15 to 20 minutes we'd like to dedicate okay. to this conversation. So a hard 820 deadline. Okay. Um, I wanted to open the floor to you to hear your feedback on our the draft that Ms. Pat sent you on our successor committee first. Yes. So that will be on the agenda for the town council on Monday. Um, I'm, I'm, present, I'm giving it to them for their uh, conversation. I'm sure it will be scheduled as, a, as an actual agenda item. You're welcome to come to that meeting, but it'll probably be more likely that it'll be an agenda item for the council to discuss. Um, have you had conversations about this at all? Yeah, yes. Okay. And then with it going to the town council, would they just be looking over our charge and would they be making the edits or revisions or would you or? Well, I think, you know, um, so my, I'm, I don't know what, what conversation you've had about it. I mean, my belief is that this should be a town council committee um, that, that, they that they create. I think it has more oomph and more uh, sustainability that way. Um, and so I think that kind of conversation, um, that's, that's where that should be. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Oh, yeah. And uh, Lynn was just on, actually. Um, oh, she, okay. so, yeah, she was just on and she was telling us some of the information, um, you know, relevant. And of course, you know, I just want to make sure I, I kind of go over it with you. I guess for, for, for me, and, you know, I don't want to speak for the rest of the group because I'm sure they'll, they'll share with you. For me, the important part will be, again, it being a standing committee, it mm -hmm. being long term. Um, and not being uh, susceptible to just this disillusion like willy nilly, you know, without actual, you know, real uh, reason to, to dissolve it, right? Like basically, okay, you're not doing any work or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But as long as the, the, the committee is active and doing the work, that it should be long standing. So my thing would be how um, um, would that happen? You know, is, is it best to happen through a town manager? committee, because that's what Lynn, Lynn said, that it would probably be a good idea to start it as a town manager and then turn it into something with a bylaw because it wouldn't be dissolved. So I think that would be something. The second question would be, how soon can that committee be put into place? Because obviously we need that that group to kind of, you know, be put together soonish. Of course, it will be a hiring process, which we, I mean, a selection process, which we um, stated in our charge and everything. Um, but putting that in place. And then third, and we didn't put that in there, but I think we need to mention it. And maybe our, obviously we're still on our drafts recommendations. We haven't finalized it yet. You know, will there be some type of st stipend or something to it? Because it'll be a group that will be doing a lot of work, you mm -hmm. know? So I think, you know, at least something, you know, should, should be able to go along with the, the work that that group does. So I never like to be out of sync with the town, the council president. So I don't know what um, she had said. Or, um, so um, we may disagree on this actually. Um, uh, so my belief is that a town manager committee is an advisory committee. You are an advisory committee to the town manager, right? And the, you know, the town manager created this, the community safety working group can 
make changes to it, whatever. I think the next level is a town council created committee, which is what the Energy and Climate Action Committee was. It's what the reparations committee, uh, African Heritage Reparations uh, Assembly is. Um, and then the third level is a, is a bylaw, uh, which is what the Human Rights Commission, I believe, is, Jen would know. So um, each, you know, the doing a town manager is fast and, you know, it's just approving it. But, it, but the next uh, the town manager can dissolve it, say, okay, I'm done, thank you very much. Town council committee um, is more town-wide, it feels like to me. Um, and again, I don't wanna be out of step with the town council president, but um, it, the, it would be the town council that would have to change anything on the charge. And uh, then a bylaw is, is much more formidable. It takes longer to, to get up and pass a bylaw um, and then and, and then it, once it's there, it's there unless you really rescind the bylaw itself. How long would it take though for the town council? If, if it seems like you're saying the town council will be the one to have more security besides going the bylaw way, which yeah. takes a lot of time. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it can take time. It, I mean, I just came from a meeting that was supposed to take an hour and it took two hours on one agenda item. We were on the still a, a first agenda item at, at 7.30, started at 5.30. So I would hate to predict how long it would take them, but they actually did the, the um, AHRA uh, charge pretty quickly. Um, so I don't, I, th I think it's one or two meetings. They usually take two meetings for almost anything. Um, I would don't we think- be, Would we be able to get this going before the end of our charge? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And so that's why I put it, I put what you had drafted into the council packet for Monday. Um, so that it, we get the ball rolling on it. And they may have opinions on it, whether which way they want to go. Thank you, Mr. Bockelman. Uh, Ms. Pat and then Ms. Walker. So, Mr. Paul, I was wondering uh, your feelings about us recommending two CSWG members being on the standing committee. Your feelings about that? So I think, you know, that I think that's fine. I think you don't want that you may not want that in the actual charge because then it's, you know, this charge will last for years, right? And so it's, people are gonna say, well, we have to now have two people who used to be on CSWG, you know, five years from now. So I think that what we, we can adjust it, say initial membership should include, because it is a, seen as a successor group. Um, so I think that that, um, you know, there's some logic to that. And for, for instance, with the um, AHRA, which is the Reparations Assembly, they did, have someone from reparations for Amherst designated as being as, as a member of that group. And I, and I did, if I may go back to Ms. Ferreira's comment about stipends, um, you know, I think that, sh that should be a recommendation. It's, you know, something we're looking at sort of more globally for all town committees, but I think by, by all means, I would recommend, you should recommend that if that's what you feel. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Walker. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Buffelman. Um, so I was wondering um, if you had any feedback or any thoughts in regards to the charge or the language that we used in itself, because I think what we were hoping for would is that this would be a time that you would give us feedback and your uh, like ideas around it so that we can make sure that what we're presenting to the council is fully developed, because I think we also had the idea that depending on what feedback or suggestions you gave to us, we might want to revise it. And I'm not saying that we would want to do that at this point, because I think at this point, we're interested in getting this moving along as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. But I, I just would be interested in if this is going to go in front of the council and you're going to say, well, I have X, Y, and Z suggestions, I would like to know what those are also ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I did not want to make changes to what you had recommended. Um, so there were, um, I, I think that it, it works really well. Um, uh, because you, you build off of the, the resolution that the count, town council had always or already done. Um, so the terms of appointments, um, there's some language we can put in there that everybody would, would recognize where you start with like one, two and three year terms and then it, and then it flows in the, the terms actually will be three year terms, but you start with you know, two with one year terms, two with two year terms and three with three year terms. And then from then on, it's a three year term. And there's language in the uh, charter that we can just adapt for that. Um, I didn't recognize the charter section that was being referenced under authority. Um, and it says section 32 hyphen, uh, 
colon six. So I think we want to identify what that section truly is. Um, to respond to that, I just copied what um, from the, um, I think from CSWG or something. I just okay. copied it. Yeah, that's okay. all I did. Yeah. So we can look at that. Yeah. Um, so when you have the composition, um, it, it requires two white residents. Um, and then, uh, and it says a total of seven residents from socioeconomic diversity. And I'm not really sure what that actually means. Um, so what's what you mean by seven residents from socioeconomic diversity? Are we differ differing uh, socioeconomic? Is that what we meant? Yeah, seven. Alicia, Alicia has a good idea. Alicia, go ahead. With diverse socioeconomic background. So we don't want them to all have the same socioeconomic background. We want across the members for there to exist a diverse socioeconomic range. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I gather that, I assume that that's what you meant, but in terms of like, if we have all people who are lower income, do I have to go and recruit a wealthier person <laughs> to serve <laughs> on it? Uh, and also um, we don't really ask of that question about what is your socioeconomic status. That's never, that's not a question we ever ask anybody. So I'm not sure how we would accomplish that. Do yeah, you have and, advice? Employment information. Usually you ask for job information. No. Um, on the CAF. No, I don't think we do. Okay. Jen, do we? We don't ask that on the community activity form, do we? I think it's one of those things that might be optional. I'm going to look at a community activity. Yeah form and I'm also trying to pull up the charge just to be helpful so that yeah. people can see it. So in terms of, um, I guess, two things, I guess you said that we should change um, the language to say initial, um, it should be initial like to CSWC, that's, right? That's just housekeeping, yeah. Yeah, so that would be one. And then the other one, so I, I do get what you're saying in terms of, you know, necessarily you don't have to put like white residents in there. What we could do is just say five BIPOC, because I think what's important is to make sure that there's five BIPOC residents and, and at least initially two members of CSWG, you know what I'm saying? And then we could just leave it at that. We don't have mm -hmm. to say two white um, residents and kind of just leave it and, and keep it, you know, keep it going, keep it as such, right? Yeah. So the composition, I think you would, there's some language, I think for the CSWG charge, it's a, I think you'd say at least five BIPOC residents. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. right now it says you have to have five and you have to have two whites. And I don't think you need to necessarily, um, I mean, if it's all BIPOC, so be it, right? But you're, you're just saying at minimum five yeah. BIPOC, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess this is all helpful. Would you be able to just kind of provide us some of that language? Absolutely. Um, and then we could um, kind of, you know, fiddle with it. But I think that these are all helpful suggestions. Mm -hmm. The other, um, the other on the, under the charge, um, the second bullet was to, um, where it says ensure the implement, implementation of all CSWG recommendations. So that actually is a recommend, the CSWG recommendations would go technically to the town manager, but ultimately to the council. And so if the council doesn't accept one of the recommendations for whatever reason, um, you know, and they say, no, we don't want to do that. I think it would be hard to include this into the charge. Um, if the council says, no, we don't want to do that thing that the CSWG had recommended. Um, so I just think we might want to, you know, talk about what that means and what how that in, is included. Um, I, um, so one of the things that I had thought about, oh, so under staff support, I think it's fine to say the town manager or designee, we had talked about um, having the DEI director be the support person for this committee. Um, so. Oh, Ms. Moyston and then Ms. Pat. Sorry, I so like because I can't show the community activity form because of you know privacy issues, but I can tell you what the fields are. So 
it does ask for your contact information, first name, last name, address, town, email, phone, and then tell me about yourself. And then if you're following on any, it just doesn't ask. It asks for age, gender, racial, back, ethnic background, languages spoke, and those are optional. So there's no inquiry about place of employment or um, economic status. Could we add a question to encourage um, candidates to share lived experience that would aid them on this committee or something with language around that? So we could, I mean, this is a form that's used for all town committees and the council has a similar but different form for its appointment appointed committees. Um, I think there's room on the committee on the forum to fill out. I think there's room people, some people fill out the bare minimum because it's just, they just want to put their name in. Others put a lot more work, a lot more effort into it. Um, I think even if we could put in parentheses, encouraging candidates to share lived experience that could be relevant to the work, it would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pat? I have a suggestion and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think people can have some idea um, just to say occupation. Somebody can say retired. You can have an idea. Somebody can say school teacher. Somebody can say homemaker or something. You can have an idea, but that's indirect way of getting social economic background. Well, I mean, I, so I don't know. I'm a, little bit, yeah. I'm a little bit concerned about that because I could say I'm a personal care attendant, but my husband's a physician, right? And so that changes it. Okay, we can just, so so my question is, uh, should we just leave that, uh, uh, delete that one, social economic? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bachman and then Ms. Walker. I, I think going down Ms. Owen's route, which was, we might, we would actually think that it's a good idea to say for all of our committees, say we are looking for people with lived experience with a broad social socioeconomic background to, and I, I think that that would apply to all committees, not just this committee. And that would be a statement to sort of, of an inclusivity that we'd want to state out there. I and mean, what do you think of that, Jen? That works. I mm -hmm. think that's, that works, yeah. I was going to suggest something similar to that. And I think that is, helps with our inclusivity. Yeah, then we wouldn't have to put it specifically in the in our our charge, but it would be a, a blanket. Uh, across, yeah. yeah, it would be on the form that you complete. Exactly, your interest form. So, yeah. awesome, um, uh, Miss Walker. I know you had your hand up. Did you? And then uh, Ms. Pat. So I was going to say something similar, and I'm actually in agreement um, with Mr. Bachelman's suggestion because I was going to say that I I do think that it's still important. So. I want to thank Alicia for bringing that up when we worked mm -hmm. on the document. So, Mr. Buck Buckman, do you want us to send you the updated um, document based on your input? Are you going to help us out? And well, I think he's going to send us something. Aren't you going to send us the language and then we update it and then we'll send it back to you, right? Yes. So I could, if you would like, um, if I could get a word, I have a PDF version. If I could get a word version, I could do a track changes and send it just back to the to CSWG oh. for your com for your comments back. Um, to I'll send it to you tonight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow morning. Sorry. Okay. Tomorrow. And then, and then, by when do you need our feedback? Because I know you're going to go uh, on Monday. And so I think what we want to do on Monday is and is to introduce the successor committee to make sure the council and then say when would you like to schedule this on your meeting because well I'm, I'm assuming and maybe the council president and I are at audits, audits on this <laughs> that it should be a council meeting committee and um, if they say no we don't want to do this then I would just move forward on it so I think we'll get hopefully they'll talk about it on Monday um, a little bit to say I think there's some general understanding that there's going to be a successor agreement. Um, so, but I, but I guess for me though, I, I'd rather like if if we still can because I know they get materials beforehand. Mm -hmm. or what, but if we still can, I would rather have it uh, be in front of them, like what we're thinking and all of that, you know, uh, because this is time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be done at the end of October. So the sooner they can put this in place, and and like you said, in terms of hopefully the, through the town council, which takes a little bit of time, the better it'll be, right? Yeah. So so the draft is is in their packet now. 
Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What about this? But but this updated because I do like a lot of the switches that that we're trying to make. And again, like what um, Alicia and Bri Brianna brought up, the the whole thing is we're trying to do it in a way that um, you know gets their approval. Mm -hmm. So if you get the draft, and it's not with some of these kind of changes, especially since they like wordsmithing, right? Lynn has said this. Russ has said this. They like wordsmithing. So I think we want to get them the cleanest document because even with that, they're going to start wordsmithing. <laughs> so, um, so that would be my um, thing. Can we do that? Still give so, it to you, let's say, by tomorrow night or something or Saturday morning. And I don't so, know. Yeah, so you don't have a meeting posted, so you can't do it as a committee. Um, you, know, you could delegate to a, a member of the committee to do it. I could try to get something, you know, my edits to you. Um, I mean, I think that we could also just at the meeting on Monday say, you know, there are there are changes to be made on this, and they will recognize it really quickly about all this. And we were just talking about really cosmetic changes mm -hmm. um, for most for the most part. Um, okay, so that basically you're saying that's that 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 they already have the draft. That's what's going to have to stay. But okay, so this no, is no, 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 no. Oh, this is what yeah. I will recommend. I will email the word doc to the time manager. If, if it's okay for everybody, let him make the changes and send it to the school or uh, to the town counselors. I would rather. Um, no, but we need, we need to no. look at it. I don't. No. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'd rather look at it after he makes the changes. Yeah. Just to make Would sure. that be enough time to send it to the town counselor? I mean, I don't know, but, I, they, but I still want my, I want to have my eyes on it before yeah. it goes to them. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Walker, I see your hands up. Sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you. Um, so my suggestion would be that if Mr. Balkelman could stick to the first suggestion of making the changes that we talked about tonight in with the change tracker so that we could see them and then have that sent to Ms. Moisten so she can distribute it to all of us. And then we can all reply to Ms. Moisten, yes, this is good, or I have X, Y, and Z suggestion. But I think that we should try to keep it as, as limited as possible because I don't think we should be presenting drafts to the town council. I think we should be presenting something that we say, this is good. If you guys yeah. vote yes tonight, you can pass it because otherwise we're gonna prolong this even more because then it's gonna have to come back to us again. Um, and then I had one other question. We created two additional documents that were essentially to go with the resident oversight board, but I think that they might be important documents to be presented to the town council with the draft of the successor group. And that is the why majority BIPOC and the why stipend documents. And I think if we could include those in the packet and that those can be also looked at, that those are important things to consider when looking at the successor group as well. Oh yeah, because we still need to do the stipend. Yeah, we, we, we haven't decided on that though, because we need to include that. So so quickly, can we give a, give ourselves deadline? Like, can people you know give feedback by three p.m. tomorrow? Yeah, is that realistic? I think it's that's just, assuming Mr. that is. I will I will email the word doc to the uh, to to the town manager. He makes the changes and send it to us. Can we, you know, give our feedback to him by 3 p.m. tomorrow? Yeah, that's or 5 p.m. Well, Mr. Balkelman, will you be able to get the document to us with your changes that quickly? I don't know. So I can't guarantee that. So, um, so I, what I'm, let me throw out a different uh, approach. I think they are, the council meets next Monday as well. They meet this Monday and next Monday. So if I, you know, we introduce it on Monday, we, you give me the Word document, I return the, the marked up version. You can talk about it on Thursday at your meeting at a pu publicly posted meeting. And then you say, here's what we want finally to be the, the final draft that goes to the council for its meeting on October 4th. Um, I think that's the date. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that would be a, a, for me anyway, I think that would be a better um, thing because because we still have the stipend, we still have the other things. I don't want to also rush this so that then we don't include important things that we need to include in there, you know, um, because, well, anyway, go ahead. Um, Ms. Pat so, and then Ms. Walker. Okay, so my concern is that the standing committee might not be up and running before CSWG dissolves on November 1st because appointment needs to be made. I don't know how quickly that happens, but mm -hmm. at least we should have 
one or two weeks overlap with the new group. Please, please, let's move this quickly, please. Ms. Walker and then Ms. Ferreira. Um, my only concern with the second recommendation of the town manager is that we don't have a scheduled meeting for next week. So oh. there would be no way for us to, to we actually can just see email, but we can email each other. I mean, you know, we don't have- Well, we can't no, email no, each other. Through, through Jennifer, email through email Jennifer. Email. Yeah. Like, we email Jennifer, I mean, you know, the, the yeah. ritual, right? I mean, we what else Jennifer. am I going to do on Saturday morning? <laughs> like, come on. Like, <laughs> but, but Jennifer, you wouldn't have to do that if 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 we elongate it, then it wouldn't be this rush. Rush. It would just right. be Paul so, getting it to us, us going through it, and then getting it to you, and then you get it to us. Then we have time to kind of, you know, yeah. mull it over, and then get it to, to him. I mean, for it's me, weekend. I, though, they work on, you know, the, you know, is their weekend off, so we have to be respectful of that too. We can't yeah, expect them saying, to work. But, but that's seriously, what I'm saying. we can't. We can't expect them to work on weekends, please. But Miss Pat, that's why I'm saying. Let's resolve this uh, tomorrow. Let's get this done for, uh, tomorrow, please. Get it. Well, I mean, Miss Miss Walker and then Mr. Bockelman. Um. So what I think the best course of action would be is that if Mr. Bockelman could make the revisions by the end of the day tomorrow and send it out to us before he leaves, and then that we have the weekend to get our suggestions back. I know ideally we would have the final version in the town council packet ahead of time, but realistically, since tomorrow's Friday and then we hit a weekend, it's not going to be in there before Friday anyways. And they have on multiple different occasions received materials day of. So I don't think it's an issue because they do have the previous draft and they aren't gonna be truly significant changes, I don't think. So I think it would still be okay to just bring them whatever we come up with over the weekend on Monday and I think we should present to them the why stipend document that says why there should be a stipend. And that if there is a discussion leading to the town council approving this document, they can recommend a stipend to us and we can come back next meeting or something because we don't have time to come up with a whole discussion to recommend what the stipend would be, but we have a document explaining why stipends are important that we can give to them at this time. Thank you, um, Alicia. Mr. Bockelman? They will not vote on it on Monday. They, they, have, they have not seen anything. They never vote. I mean, it's very seldom that they are taking a significant action like this um, just on the fir first reading, um, especially if they don't have it well in advance. I mean, I get lectured on this all the time from the council. Um, so, I mean, I think it's too bad you're not meeting next week. Um, and and the, the idea of sending things to... so. The idea of the open meeting law is you can't deliberate electronically. So you, you well, just Jennifer can send information to everyone. You can't, if you express opinion back to her, that's fine. But if she shares what you said to other people, then that's called deliberating. And that's not allowed under the open meeting law. Um, let's see, how do we do this? So I think that Jenny have an idea. Sub committee. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ms. Weston and then Ms. Walker. Just wondering if I make the changes. So if Deborah gives me, sends in the changes that she wants and I put them into the document and then, well, that's a lot of back and forth though. Yeah, that's called consecutive. That's avoiding the open meeting law by I, serial I, discussions. Right? Me or something. I don't <laughs> know. Uh, Ms. Walker. But, <clears throat> sorry, can we not just do it in two rounds? Like Ms. Moyston sends to us your corrections we all send back to her one, our one set of corrections and she puts them all together, sends it back to us, okay. No, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the last step that breaks We're getting the, the revisions that she made from all of us. That makes it not work. Uh, Mr. Bachman. I, I think the solution might be a subcommittee. I think as Ms. Pat suggested, I think that might be the best way. You know, if you have people already getting together or something who can look at it, um and say and then if the if the working group is saying yes you have our blessing whatever you finalize is fine by us and you went to forward it on um you know we would try to get that done by the end of thursday next week next thursday so it gets in the council package and so i just have to you know ask the council president if she will add this to the agenda so um uh so that would be the only the only caveat on this but it's not a complicated document 
but and also the good that they will have seen it for a first draft of it Monday, so it won't be new to them. And they'll see a, a finalized version with support documents coming to them the next week. Uh, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Pat. So if so, would you all still have a discussion about it this Monday? And if so, what would this discussion be about if you're just going to rehab that discussion the following Monday? So what I was intending is to say that Community Safety Working Group is rec recommending a successor group. There's a draft charge that the committee has, has put together. We're finalizing char the, the charge uh, and cleaning it up and we have that ready for your next meeting. And uh, the council president is likely to put that on the agenda for the October 4th meeting. And then say, counselors, are there any things that pop out at you that you would like to highlight to us that we should know about in advance? To ask them to raise any issues before they actually consider it in a serious, in a, uh, as an agenda item. Ms. Pat, Ms. Ferreira, and then Ms. Moisten. Sorry. Oh, you're not, on this switch, I think we're not deliberating worse than town council. This is easy cosmetic issues. I don't know why we wouldn't like have the town manager make the changes we discussed tonight because I took some notes and it was um, Felicia and myself that, you know, put that document to, together. It's not like very difficult. I'm just concerned about time. Mm -hmm. We have less than five weeks. And if we keep dra dra uh, dragging this, the standing committee will not happen before November 1st. What else do we need to go back and forth online? I don't understand mm -hmm. that. I don't get that. It's very easy. Let the town manager you know, make the changes we discussed mm -hmm. tonight. I have the notes. And then let the town council do it on Monday. Please, people. Mr. Bockelman and then Ms. Ferreira. So that could be that could be an option as well. If, if you say delegate to the co-chairs or whoever, you know, we can make the changes because they are pretty minimal. Um, the only very, other, yeah. you know, the only other change I would suggest is that we don't mention the consultant uh, that we talked about. CSW. It says and seven gen, um, but seven gen is a consultant that you had, and usually we didn't put a name of a consultant in a in a charge. Um, and then you know, I think we've we make the changes and then we can substitute this charge for the one that's in the in the council packet. So it looks a little more formalized. And yeah. for the other two documents, the supporting documents, are they ready to go? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. So I, I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but I guess I'm confused though. Are they gonna vote on this if we get them something by Monday? No. Are they no. voting on it on Monday? So then no. why are we rushing this though too? I, I don't get it. If they're not voting on it on Monday, why are we rushing it to get it before them on Monday? But, but that's not what uh, Ms. Lane told us, though. When, when she talked to us. OK, so, thinks, then, so then she, she, she thinks that likely, I mean, she's still in the audience right now. All right, then pull her in, because I'm confused. OK. Please, we need, to, we need to move quickly, people, please. Yeah, yeah, I see it's not supposed to be gone already, so. Yeah, and let's not, I think that the, what the issue is, is whether or not who's going to, who's going to be responsible for this standing committee, right? That's no, what no, the no, whole no. thing that's is. Not, that's not the issue. The no. issue is we, we have to. No, no, no. I mean, that's what the council is going to be. That's what their decision is, right? Is that, no. am I not correct it's in not that? It's just whether there's no. going to be standing committee is basically going to be what our charges, blah, blah, blah. You know, whether they're in agreement with everything that we've written about who we are you know, and what we're going to be in terms of a standing committee, they have to vote on all of that. So, so uh, my question is that obviously if they're going to vote on it on Monday and they can vote on it on Monday, then yeah, let's make the changes, but I don't That's want... what she said. That's what she said though. She's... Yeah, well, here she is. Let's see. Let's see what she says. If that's okay. not the case, then. Okay. So Bring her in. <laughs> I'm in, I think. Yeah. Am I? Yes, you yes. are. Thank you. First of all, I always enjoy that Paul has all this knowledge about committees that I don't always have. So thanks, Paul. Uh, I, I'm actually fine if it's a council committee or a uh, town manager committee. You were asking what could be done fat, the most rapidly, and I was suggesting town manager can be right. done most rapidly. Yep. But that doesn't mean uh, it gives it as, quote, as much protection, although I just don't think that's an issue with this committee. Um, the uh, in terms of the cleaner it is on Monday, the more likely you're to get a vote. But in fact, right now, uh, 
I just can't predict. I mean, I'm only one vote of 13. <laughs> and um, I just can't predict. I know that the council is very committed to um, continuing the work of CSWG and receiving your report at the end of October. So if they see the uh, revised um, proposal, the way you're proposing it, somebody can make a motion from the floor and we could say, go ahead. Um, Mr. Bockelman. So hearing that, I think then it makes sense for us to move to get, and I think Ms. Pat is right, the, the changes we've talked about are pretty fairly minimal. It doesn't mean the council won't uh, have comments on it. Uh, I do want to caution you about it won't be up and running before you term. Uh, it's just impossible because the way the appointment process works under the charter is once there's a vacancy, it has to be posted on the town bulletin board for 14 days. After those 14 days, um, we make we do the interviews. Um, and I think the way um, so um, so in turn, you you have suggested a, a, a process for interviewing uh, for for the group, right? And right now, I, I always do bring a group together to do the interviews. Um, so you saw who interviewed you for this position. I again used uh, Sid Ferreira, Barbara Love, and Keisha Dennis as a sole interviewers for the um, reparations group. Um, so I mean, I think that that's that will go without saying. Um, but then once we do the interviews, then the, the recommendation goes to the town council. They get gets re automatically referred to the TSO committee, and then they go back to the council. So it's impossible for this group to be up and running before you term. Um, it won't, it doesn't have to take really long. But it, if we don't get enough candidates, for instance, you know, we sometimes it takes some time to recruit people. So and we've already done a lot of recruiting for the reparations group already. Thank you, Mr. Bockelman. Alicia? Um, thank you, Mr. Bockelman. That's helpful. And so I think <clears throat> if we're thinking about this realistically and knowing that it's not very likely that this will be up and running before the end of our group term, that that makes it even more important that we get this conversation or at least a vote, the thoughts of a vote going in council as soon as possible, mm -hmm. which is why I still recommend that we just make these slight revisions, send it to the council on Monday with the supporting documents, because if it's strong enough, if there are people who feel strongly enough about it, it does have the possibility to move to the next step on Monday. And that would make me feel a lot better than, well, well, let's talk about it again next week. Yeah. So I think that we should just do as much as we can and hope for the best at this point. Thank you, Ms. Walker, Ms. Pat, and then Ms. Ferreira. So, uh, Ms. Lynn, thank you for, um, Wayne in. Can I suggest something that uh, Deborah and the town manager work on this so that it will get to the town council? Because I don't want to you know, do anything else. If town manager you know, make changes, that's fine. We're looking for something that, that, needs, that can be approved. So Deborah, if you really want to- No, know, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's, fine. that's fine, but going back and forth, we don't have time for that. Yeah, but I, I don't want to be the one to kind of just make the decisions for the CSWG. I mean, this is important. But we're telling you not to do it. Um, I mean, we don't have time. We yeah, don't have time. no, I don't feel comfortable with that. You know, I don't feel comfortable with, with taking that on, you know, like to what, 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 I think we should just have a plan, you know, I mean, you know, you know, Paul can tell us like, okay, by when he'll get it back. And then we just need to get our our um, changes to um, Jennifer and then we can't do that because of open meeting law and we're not meeting next week. We're no, meeting but I'm in two I weeks. Thought, I thought that we can uh, we can send it back to you. Who could I thought we had to we could do this or something. No, we can't make any of these changes and, and no no, and no we, we can't we can't do we can't communicate electronically like that back and forth. Isn't that what, no, what I'm it? saying in terms of edits look before it was because we were going to be doing a lot more kind of discussion. I thought that these were going to be edits. We can't get any, you're getting, you're giving us edits. We can't give you edits back. I no, guess. What, I'm, what I'm proposing is to have one rep from CSWG and that's you to work with uh, uh, the town manager so that we can have this document out on Monday. Is that okay with Alicia and Brianna? So we don't want to say it, just two of you work on it so that it will get to the town council on Monday, but, please. Um, well, Alicia, let me see what Paul has to say. 
Mr. Bachelman and then Alicia. So I, I guess the question is, um, let's see, we don't, to, the most efficient way would be to get the edits that we just talked about on, onto paper. Someone from the CSWG looks at it because this is a document coming from CSWG. So it should be the final product. Someone from CSWG says, yes, this is what we're, we want to put in front of the council. Um, and it, it, so I don't think there's a lot of room to go back and forth. And I guess the question is, are there other changes that people, we're talking about it now, are there other changes that people want to talk about whoever is your designated person can incorporate or does everybody have to see the written document again? I guess for me, the only thing that I would want to um, be a part of, and I don't know if it would need to happen before the town council meeting Monday is the conversation on stipends and putting in language for the CSWG to help negotiate those and not just go off of um, town council recommendations. Um, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Moyston. Um, thank you so much for bringing that up, Brianna. I am in complete agreement with that statement. Um, I just want them to have the why stipend document when looking at the charge, because I think it's important to know when looking at the charge that we intend this group to be stipend. Um, and so I do agree with your statement, but also wanted to say just in regards to the document that Ms. Pat and I worked on the original version. And so I'm like, as is, I'm okay with it because <laughs> that's what we created. I'm okay with the revisions that we talked about tonight. I think those are, are all great. I really trust and respect Deborah's expertise and the vision that she has. And so if she has any additional um, edits to make, I approve of them. So there what, you go. what about though, what um, uh, Paul was saying in terms of da -da 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 -da, the recommendations, yeah, ensure the implementation of all CSWG recommendations. I mean, I, I, want, I want that language in, but I know you said that that wouldn't be something that you would, you would recommend, but I would want that in there. Mr. Bockelman and then Ms. Walker. So it's your document. If you want that in there, you should put it in. I'm, I'm telling you what I would do. And you can say, you can reject that change if you want to. Uh, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Moyston. Um, so thank you, Ms. Ferrer, for bringing that up. Again, I would be happy with whatever you decide to do with this document, but my thought is to leave that in there uh, because I think that, I mean, we were told that the town does favor the recommendations that we put forward at the for the first part of our charge that we just can't tackle all of them at the same time. Like, I don't think we've gotten feedback that we don't want to do any of these things. And so we want a group who will make sure that they can see those things through that we've already been told are things that are eventually going to happen anyways. And we have written in the charge specifics about looking for grants and other things if the funding can't happen through the town and through the town budget. And so I think that that should remain. I have an agreement. Um, Ms. Moyston and then Mr. Bockelman, if you wanted to respond. Yeah, I just want to say that I only have what is listed as a draft for Y stipends for the, but this is says Y stipends for the resident oversight board. So I don't know if somebody has a different version or if that's the same thing and the we same need thing. to change it. It's the same and thing. Before I, um, I will need to send it in to Paul. I would guess, or if I just have a, mine says a draft version. So I just wanted to make sure there wasn't another version of it. I can look for that. And in the meantime, would the group feel comfortable if I just revised it to, with our successor group and changed the language over from resident oversight board and submitted it? Okay, um, Ms. Pat, I see you had your hand. Oh, Ms. Pat. Okay, so in terms of um, uh, CSWG recommendations, actually some town councilors told some of us privately that some of the recommendations that weren't taken up, we should try to keep it alive. And that's why we included those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, we would like to keep uh, the all CSWG recommendations. So Deborah, are you comfortable, you know, representing us to do this? We trust you to work with um, the town manager. 
I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm okay to do it, but it all depends on the time because obviously I'm also extremely busy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what, what, what would be the time span with this, Paul? I mean, I'm going to send the, 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 the thing, and then you and the town manager will figure out time. I don't know. Yeah, I just want to have an idea. It, so if I, I get it, it so it, I can it, see if I can take this on. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. Miss Pat, you'll get something to me when? I can email it to you right after this uh, meeting. Okay. So if I get something to you by noon tomorrow, Ms. Farrell? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I wouldn't be able to get something back to you until, because I have a, a solid a, a, a meeting until like at least 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm super duper busy. So, uh, But I can get that to you, I guess. I don't even know. <laughs> Yeah. So whenever you get it, I will send it off to the clerk for the council and ask them to put it in the packet. Um, you so know. I can get it to you after five then? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll just ask her to put it in. I mean, she's uh, in a class all day tomorrow, I know. So she won't be looking at email till about five o'clock anyway. Um, I just ask her to look at this in particular. So it might not get into the council packet till close of business on, on Friday. I think it's, I think it's really simple though. Honestly, just it's a page and a half. Mm -hmm. But then and then um, Brianna, you're going to get the other document. Why stipend? Yeah, I can do the why stipend by tomorrow um, yep. at noon time. And and it was what, what's the other one too, Alicia? That we're getting. It's oh, why why BIPOC. BIPOC. and why BIPOC. I'm right. sending that to him now because I have that one. I just didn't want to send the why stipend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And I just want to say it's 847, so I don't know how. Do you guys have other questions for the town manager? No, we're done. We're done. No, we're done. <laughs> so, so on the other two documents, who will be the final edit to say this can go to the council? No. Um, yeah, yeah. Bri Brianna will send it to, to, to you and me, right? How will that work? And, so and, who, then, who, and then I can review everything. And then okay. you. So you, you are the final OK before it goes into the council packet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Any more questions? Okay. Um, so does anybody have any upcoming events that they'd like to share? <laughs> Ms. Moyston? <laughs> I'm so sorry that I don't know if I made an announcement or not about the Puerto Rican Heritage um, celebration today, but it was absolutely fabulous mm -hmm. and it was one of our larger ones. And so mm -hmm. tomorrow from four to five we are having in the indian india and pakistani independence day celebration um so over on the no north common as well so nice awesome uh, mr bockelman I, I know it's so late but i think that the uh puerto rican heritage day was spectacular lots of kids from fort river and from the high school came down we had the former mayor of san juan speaking oh, wow. who, is, who is a who is a rock star um she's the one who Trump through the paper tells that. Um, I remember that. <laughs> and she she is and she was so great with the kids. I mean, it's just a remarkable day. Nice. It was it was fabulous. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so our next meeting date will be October seventh. And just as a reminder, um, we'll be meeting from six p.m. to nine p.m. If the ADMA the ADMHA agrees to work with us, I will keep everybody um, informed as to to the schedule and when I know information I'll share with Ms. Moyston to distribute to the group. And I will also share the schedule document that Alicia and I put together so we can all be on the same page. <laughs> and I just want to say the reparations committee is going to meet on Tuesday at 6 p 6 30 p.m. Um, and I'm just going to put that out there because a lot of those folks supported uh, has supported the community safety working group and I'm sure that um, if anybody has the ability to that just so you guys know. Thank you. Is that um, their first meeting? Sorry, Brianna. Well, they had a, like a introductory meeting similar okay. to what you guys had um, back in November. And so this will be their first meeting actually um, getting into the work. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there other topics that were not anticipated within 24 hours? Awesome. Okay. So with all of our business complete, I'm calling this meeting adjourned. Thank you guys so much for your time this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Long night. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.